Flat Chat Overwatch episode 220 and I'm here with the boys for another episode discussing one of the video games of all time uh this time around there's no OWSCS to really recap except Korea so we'll let we'll let Avril have that you already got a little teaser in the back of your, yourself Avril I see you this yeah this is OWCS Korea for those that are not aware no, no but uh, we'll, we'll talk Korea. about that too sure. Uh, <laughs> some people are saying that this is the upcoming mythic season. Uh, I mean, we all, we might already like smash it out. Jaws, you're shaking your head. You 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 are not, not happy about this. The rumor mercy mind. mythic skin. I hate to break it, dude. It's gonna be a Where's huge season. So much money. Where's the sin? Where's the sin? Everybody's favorite character in the Zen, game, Zenyatta. The most skins out of like fucking anyone. Yeah, he needs another one. He hasn't got a mythic though. He needs another one. Oh Everyone needs a mythic God. skin. What's the, what's the play base numbers? second mythic skin, I think, is probably oh, the how best. Many, how many That's people like, play Zen Capitan Mercy? How many people like play Zen Capitan Mercy? It's like 1% versus like 30%, bro. Like, the Zen, no one play in Zen. What else Ain't do we need? We best need comment, um... The best comment I saw, by the way, someone was like, yo, they, they just took, hero, they took Heroes out of the Battle Pass, and then they de deployed the Mercy mythic like a kill streak. Ooh. Was just cooking. Was just cooking with this one. I want the, the I predator Winston missile, the five mythic. kill streak. I think a Winston Mythic would be. <laughs> Winston Mythic. Look, just think dude. about it. You could put effects on the primary, dude. That'd be lit. Like, you could do primal. like particle effects on the primary, yeah. make it like fire or something. I don't know. Yeah. According to Overbuff, it it's actually closer than we think. Mercy is number two at 6.69%. After Genji, right? Uh, after Ana. It's number one. Ana. Ana. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is, oh, last three months. Let's do, let's do uh, all time. Yeah, it's still kind of the same. And uh, Senyara is I, actually in the top 10. Wow. I so, is that uh, all time eight. total games played or like percent? I don't know. I don't the know. oldest hero, like the new heroes won't be in there. So I think in the end, most yeah. recent three months. Also, bottom five. Those bottom are definitely five? not that accurate. Bottom those five definitely have stats. is Echo, Symmetra, Ramatra, Wrecking Ball, Magia. I've heard Echo is just unplayed at low ranks. It's kind of crazy with how good that hero is, but I can see it. It's kind of hard to execute. Yeah. It's like one of the most high skill cap heroes in the game. Yeah, you have to, by you have far. To know her. Well, well, I mean, maybe Tracer's, there's like higher skill cap heroes, but then Echo has like a very there, like, low floor. Like if you shoot the bat on Echo, on you're going to do nothing. Neutral and Echo is harder than Tracer at low ranks. That's true, because you have to, you have to be like very The fly, or projectiles, the... two different types of projectile speed, beam, like positioning and movement. Yeah, it's... That's true. That's well, most you of have those, to know most... all the heroes to play Echo. You have to know no, all that's them. True. Yeah. That's why you, I you, own you, an Echo, because I copy my, the Doom and I'm just locked the hell in. I know exactly well, what to do. Uh, most of those true. players don't know that Echo is the traditional fire counter. They always, they, they just... I think that's, the, that's how you know the difference between someone who really knows and someone who doesn't know. It's like... Will they bring up Echo as the fire counter when you ask what the fire counters are? I think you unlock Echo like last, right? Out of all the heroes, if you're a new player. I, I recently played with someone who was playing the game for the first time, and they were like, I got Soldier, <laughs> I got Soldier, yeah, get like Genji you off level on, like, 3. The very basic heroes. Yeah, yeah. They had Tracer, Widowmaker, Soldier, oh, hell and uh, yeah. something else. And they were just like, oh, I might pick Widow, and I was like, don't pick Widow. Don't, oh, you're level two. Don't pick you're Widow. level two. You need yeah, to level up to play Widow. They should lock Widow. Low, low yeah, key. actually. <laughs> Although, to be honest, if you're like an FPS player and you're like, I want to play Sniper, you kind of, they, they should let you play Widow. It was an eye opening experience to see someone who's never played Overwatch like start playing Overwatch and, you, and asking questions with about them. Isn't that terrible? Aren't the games like incredibly hard for them? Like, the queue with an experience like high ranked player? It, it, it wasn't that it probably bad. Gives you a because mix remember, Jake, I'm play. washed, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean. Still, you're washed, but you're still like, you know, 99th percentile. Uh, yeah, I mean, I picked like Lucio, and I, actually, I don't think it was that bad for them. I, it, I don't think it was that bad for them. They, they, had, they had a good enough time that they'll come back and play more, I think. Dude, so. over, this is Overwatch. Come up, Bark, baby. We're getting these new gamers in. Yeah. Let's go. This yeah, they played, uh, they played Genji, and they were like, oh my god, Genji's so fun. And I sent them a core queue video, and they started like browsing core queue tips <laughs> oh, for Genji. Know, so it begins. <laughs> Come so, buy my course, bro. I brought the Genji maze <laughs> yeah. to the game. <laughs> this, is the game this, is the, this is the gateway to buying courses. Two, actually. You should spend money on day <laughs> two. It's a good idea. Imagine, how, imagine Jake training a day two player. It's like, all right, so what I mean, you got to do is you got to left click. it's not worth It's not worth it. You got to use WASD. <laughs> yeah, I, I, cause they were like, they were like, uh, cause they, they're normally like a battle royale player, and they just yeah, play like one map over and over again. They were like, how like many Apex maps are there? And I was like, I don't know, like it? 20, 25 maps. And they were like, what? <laughs> there's twenty <laughs> maps in this game. I have to learn twenty maps, and then you play Warzone, and there's like one. Like, where are we dropping? Yeah, it's it's tough. I think you muted Joss. But you know, what's funny is that okay, that one Warzone map is probably bigger than all twenty five round maps combined. 
Yeah, no, yeah, probably is. Pretty, yeah. Probably pretty close. Yeah, maybe, actually. but yeah. then, you know, we got different objectives and, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, the game is much okay. more complicated. Let's talk about the Apex the news. They might remove the drop ship from, from pro, pro, pro Play. Play. Have you seen you that? Just, you you auto drop yeah. wherever you want. They're talking about it. So they they're should. like, because they, okay. they already do gentlemen's and stuff. Yeah, they already the do RNG GAs like... for like, okay, we get Hydro Dam, we get like Lava Siphon and shit like that. So they might just remove that in pro play. That's a might. I'm not sure if that's actually like, it's going to be pushed through, but this isn't for like the main game. It's just for, for pro play, which is quite interesting. So, so how do you spawn quite... in? Well, it will probably be set up in the lobby. So like team one will be response. Lava Siphon team. Team two will be Hydro Dam. Team three will be like, you know, uh, No Name or something, you know? Like, you just, you just start like the game and your character just boom appears. Uh, just I would assume look. they would just like, boop. You just probably drop exist. out of the sky above well, your this, POI, right? Yeah. I would assume. You just, oh, probably they, not they even that. They probably just spawn on the ground. So yeah. then how do you how do you address situations where teams actually want to like hard drop on each other? Well, that's the thing. I mean, like, I don't think. I guess they're the point is they're that removing is... that basically because the problem yeah. is teams. Now we are actually doing play chat Apex Legends guys. Teams, I love Apex. they are there are better POIs and worse POIs, and teams yeah, would so prefer the, the better yeah. POIs. Exactly. Yeah. So like, all, all of the higher ranked teams get better POIs. That so is, so the, so the other right. teams just eat shit. Is like, like well, I guess to, like, I guess we just have to take the shit POI. Because honestly, oh, the POIs aren't, it's not that, it's like a bit different, but it's not that crazy. And yeah. the biggest POIs, you probably have two teams go. Like, because honestly, I think that's like normal. Like the omit, like the cities and stuff on that. Yeah, so like, those like is it Lava more. Siphon on World's Edge? That's like, it's two halves and like yeah, one like team East takes one. I'm pretty sure it's Lava Siphon. Yeah, because then one team takes one, one team takes the other. Or like mm. classic, like TSM dropping uh, mid World's Edge. And then classic. one team classic. takes East and West, you know, like, and, and then they just don't fight at the very beginning because it's not worth it. And they just go their own separate Johnny, way. what are your thoughts on this? I know, uh, you, I know you got a lot to say about this. So. Yeah, I mean, I think they might, might have bigger problems in the fact that, you know, Apex cheaters can, like, hack into people's yeah, computers. Yeah, that, that has been but, wild. Uh, <laughs> cheaters. That's might. an issue. That is sure. an issue. <laughs> it's not, they said it's guys. not RCE, but how, I mean, what else could it be? I guess a it literal, be it's, it's, it's a literal RCE if they can get into your fucking PC. Yeah, but, I mean, it, yeah. Could, it could still be the individual's compromise, right? There's still, like, two individuals' compromise. Well, that, that's how the RCE would work. It would go through the game and then it would compromise them through no, the I game. No, I mean, you, know you can't... I mean? can... Well, I guess it's hard to say, right? Is it RC or is it the Bro, people? Because it's only two if they people, can right? take over Titanfall, like if they can take over Apex, the Apex client, and stop people from fucking playing with Save Titanfall two. That back end yeah, that is, is fucked. Like, dude, come on. There, there was the only matter of time. For I, oh, wait, I only was, saw uh, the I only yeah. saw the cheats in the pro game, and I just thought that was like it could have been those players getting compromised, you know? But yeah, I mean. Bro, if they can do, if they can do but something, if that, if that's something from like the that, Apex client, in, in... that's so bad. That's like, yes. that's like Ridiculous. we have to delete the game and start over. Bad. Yeah, it's for, it's insane, it's insane. Sorry, Johnny. Anyway, we're not talking about. Apex. Yeah, no worries, no worries, right. no worries, <laughs> Apex no worries. No worries. I, uh, I was actually just uh, catching up on the next segment we got going here. So uh, okay. we might as well jump to it. The big drama of the week, guys. Oh, yeah. That's the big drama for. of the that's week. That's people come to Blatchett, let's be honest. Yeah, that's, what's, that's what it was. I, I, I don't know why people come to Blatchett, to be honest. But we keep doing the show. So here we are. Anyway, uh, this week, as a lot of people know, a lot of listeners know, uh, Ex Oblivione and Twisted Minds tried to recruit some Korean players to their rosters ahead of stage two of OWCS round out uh, the rosters a little, especially Ex Oblivione, you know, especially because uh, Ents took their tank player. And so you're like, well, I guess we need a tank player, huh? And uh, they released a statement the other day saying uh, regarding the inconsistent ruling within the OWCS player eligibility, and they attached like a huge Google Docs document that I just caught up with, by the way, uh, to make sure I, I get the details uh, sort of right here. Um, because I realized I actually hadn't read this as I was, went live with the show. <laughs> but um, sick. this is uh, yeah, I'm really researched here, guys. Right. Um, Re read it live on the read it live on the stream. I will play dude, through this is so much. We'll we'll get, we'll the and this we're is not, not like it'll be like an actor's read. There's like a lot of like a lot of like intangibles in this document uh, from the Oblivion part be, about their be passion the for the scene and you know. I love the discussion. Jake can be the ESL admin and and Jaws can be like the. So guys, let's all do a we can do, we can do like a read. Yeah, we do like a script play. reading. We do like a script reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just role playing. Exactly. I'm exactly. not doing that. We're, we're not. We're, it's you not know, if, you know, we, we might laugh. have to ro it's retort like... to role playing at some point, but we're not quite there with Plat Chat. So maybe we'll do uh, the Plat Chat role play some other time. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> anyway, the next, uh, next so project. I guess the, the, the thing I wanted to cover here is that um, obviously they put out the statement, Dr. Oblivion, they tried to uh, recruit Spectra and Mag to the team ahead of stage two because they needed a tank player. Um, but they were met with messages from an admin that said a Korean player that participated in stage one of OWCS Asia is not allowed to play in stage one and two of OWCS NA and EMEA. Um, so, you know, they, they went back and forth here with the rules, like what are the rules? Can we actually pick up these players or not? And I guess the, the point that I wanted to have clarified here was why, why I was reading the document was because it was under their interpretation that they were told they, they, they could, that they could do this. And so the, 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 the sentence in question was, uh, which was confusing because Spectre had feedback from another player who told him that another team was doing this already and was advised by a different admin that this was completely acceptable. When it turned out that was not the case. So this other team in question was probably Twisted Minds, which also put out a statement the other day. Um, and here they cover, uh, following explicit confirmation from the tournament administration on Mar March 30th, we proceeded to try out, sign, and arrange flights and accommodation for two talented players from South Korea to join our team for the upcoming stage. We made these decisions based on the confirmation that incorporating players from other regions into our roster was allowed. However, at 10.30 p.m. on April 2nd, only 48 hours before the roster lock deadline, we were informed that players who have competed in another regions were not allowed to play in a different one. This abrupt rule change attributed to a misinterpretation has placed a significant strain on our current roster of the new players and the club as a whole. Moreover, this change came after we had made critical roster adjustments, including the release of one of our active players. So, you have two of the top four organizations in OWCSEU trying to recruit Korean players ahead of the stage two here, and then I, according to the Twisted Minds, there was a rule change and, you know, the, the admins are like, no, this was in the rules already. So it's been a huge drama. There were lots of takes. Reddit went bazooka. You had the EXO side. You had bazooka. the other side. What? What are you, you saying bazooka? bazooka? I, I, I don't know. You well, well, this is not the point, Jaws. <laughs> what okay, do you care sorry, if I sorry, say bazooka? Sorry, sorry, semantics. Sorry, <laughs> carry on. Do, carry on. And the, the other part, it was like, uh, I saw Christopher was, did like a back and forth with like the EXO uh, manager or something as well about the interpretation of the rules and like... I saw Yeska um, jump in after that. Yeska jumped in as well because, I mean, this is Yeska's like forte. Like he's so good at like the rule set and stuff. I remember last year, Hangzhou Spark with the seeding and everything. We did a seeding on broadcast, Jake. You remember that? Good old times. Rules expert. <laughs> yeah, rules expert. Um, and so, you know, we got two camps now. There were memes made about this. Let, let, let's get they get our reaction here. Avril, I, I know you're hot on the case here. What, what was your First reaction all, to this? Uh, what, what what camp are you in? Are you in the EXO and TM should have known this camp? Or are you in the, like, the admins messed this one up? Where, I, which camp are you in? You gotta pick sides. It's like the American political system. You gotta pick sides here. <laughs> sure, oh and, sure. And, 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 and just like, and just like a, a good United States citizen, I'm going to lean towards the side instead of diving right down the deep end of either side because that, uh, okay, be, that yeah, would be too enough. crazy to me wouldn't it i'm gonna lean towards the uh efg side because the, the more i looked into it the more i think um yeah the the mishandling of the rules was, okay sorry about okay. that <laughs> siri disagrees siri's on the siri opposite side guys insane. siri's not happy with that yeah, she, decision about me siri was like you're gonna lean on a side you fence sitting piece of shit <laughs> siri just said um Wait, yeah, uh, it, we'll also bring up the Spectre thing in a second as well, but Spectre is actually allowed to play, so it's actually just Mag. Um, but yeah, I lean towards EFG side. The more I looked at it, the more I leaned towards F EFG side because the, the once you actually read the ruling, it becomes more and more clear. EXO were claiming something about the, the definition between team and player. Um, but even beyond that, the ruling describing region... Uh, not re uh, What is it? Roster-locked players would have been in effect anyway. So even with the whole team player definition scenario... The simple fact of like the fact that Mag is still roster locked to Runaway means he's locked no matter what, regardless of whether he's a team or a player or whatever you know they want to try and say. And the whole twisted mind situation, they talk to some guy that's basically an intern. They talk to some like junior admin, some a, a contractor admin supposedly, not one of the main guys. And so in some of the DMs I saw, you know the the back and forth was like, well, twisted minds shouldn't have even spoken to that person. They should have spoken to their representative. They should have spoken to this actual blizzard admin or this actual other guy in efg and not like some junior person some like low level person that wasn't going to give them the right info so on one hand like that person probably shouldn't have given the info probably shouldn't have said yes didn't have the uh, authority to say yes and um twisted minds should have spoken to someone higher up so twisted minds got baited then extra got baited by twisted minds because i believe exo 
you know, they heard that TM was going to make moves. So X was like, well, we can just make moves as well. And so they both made moves. They both paid for flights already. Money has been spent by both teams. And now, as far as we're aware, that money has just gone down the drain. So it's a huge waste. Maybe actually XO is still going to get Spectra over because um, I asked XO, I was like, so what's the deal with Spectra? Because he played an M80 for stage one. He's not roster locked to any roster because he didn't play in Korea. So he's eligible, right? And XO confirmed that Spectra is still eligible. So maybe they get Spectra, but that doesn't solve their tank problems, unfortunately. And um, one last thing as well is I believe the there were two Rubin tanks for team. One was Fearless and the most recent room was Kellen. So there's something happened there where they shifted to Kellen and then obviously couldn't get him over because he's roster locked. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing to me is just like kind of, it sucks from like an operations perspective. Like it sucked for them to, you know, lose all this money and the flights and stuff. But in the end, yeah, they like ought to be, ought to be more sure. I do think, I, I did find the statement a little bit like, I like, I just think it, you look, for me, it looks unprofessional. I get the communities, but like, yeah, I get it when your statement is like, we work so hard and we love the game so much. It's just like, don't put that in your statement, though, from my perspective. I think that looks really childish. It's like, it looks like, hey, community, we're so, like, please give us all your sympathy. So maybe they'll change this rule, you know? Like, that's what it sort of looks like you're doing. Versus, I feel like Twisted Mind statement is a lot more like, well, we, well, they said some interpretation, you know, like, we think the rule should be another way. And then this sucks for us, this hurt us. Like, I feel like their statement felt a lot more like, yeah, okay, these things are all true. There's no, like, like, I, I think Christopher made a fair point about the emotive language in the original EXO post. It's like, I get it, but you can't be posing that, like, from, like, an official, if that's your official, like, response, you know, on social media. It, it shouldn't really be about the emotions in the situation and how we really wanted this and whatever. It's like, those things don't really come into it, right? In the end, it's a rules decision. Maybe, I think the most effective thing you can do is campaign for the rules to change, um, which maybe they should, honestly. I think that's that's another valid point that, like, I would like to see it if if you know, players who who got eliminated in Korea could, like, go on and, and play for teams in other regions. Um, so, Jay Koru actually know. had a Twitter thread about that, that I actually agree with Jay Koru in that. And he, yeah. he, he I, 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 you know, I think it, it, it's a bit weird that all regions are not the same format already. Mm, so you true. have this situation. But I did agree with Jay Koru. I believe Jay Koru had a Twitter thread where he basically said that, you know, you, you can't just have Koreans that aren't able to qualify for the Korean playoffs and then be like, well, I didn't qualify for my region, so I guess I'll just go to Europe and NA because that, that's literally the most optimal career path for me as a Korean player. And now you're like taking spots from European and North American players. And I get that there's this rule in place that, you know, the import rule, you can actually have two non Norwegian players. But I did kind of like agree with Jay Carr there. Like they, it should be the same format across all regions because I don't, I don't get yeah. what we're doing different regions uh, different formats thing and also Rush had a tweet where he was like if you're a Korean player now like you and you participated in OWCS uh, Asia like you're 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 not playing anything until August <laughs> because, because uh, that's the way the format works which is also not great because now you're sitting here April, May, June, July and waiting for August to come around, which is not not great for the ecosystem either. So it, it's just an absolute mess of things. Um, but yeah, I I I I do, I do think that the rule itself is good, but the fact that we have another situation on our hands here, where <clears throat> the the rules are misinterpreted, or that there's some kind of like mini confusion about what is going on when it comes to the admin decisions and the rules, because it feels like we've already been here a few times this year. You know, going back to the seeding uh, in the playoffs bracket, but also before then, we had the teams who qualified in Europe last stage, and then they were disqualified after qualifying through the Swiss stage because they they didn't like know the Must eligibility uh, about yeah. who could play. So you know, we're, we're we're about to get started on stage two here, and we've already had quite a few important incidents happen here. So that that's a bit worrying that you have all these. Um, little situations and then you know the pauses the mid-game pauses the, you know there was there was pretty big drama about that this past stage as well so ho hopefully it's not a trend that a bunch of uh, organizations and players have trouble um you know being able to participate in a proper way here uh with proper support and understanding rules did, did you have a take here joss yeah what's going on here not, well i think a lot of it's already been kind of said um and I agree with the emotive language in the tweet as well. 
want to harp on that a little bit. It feels a bit weird. It felt like really weird reading that. I was just like, oh man, it's like, I felt like a school kid almost. Like, no, but I really love it. No, I love it so much. Please help me, please. And it's just like, oh, man, it's it's rough because I think, especially with um, this new system as well, I think with teams that need to be supported like they're not like toronto defiant or anything like that they haven't got like crazy big backing or anything and it being grassroots as well you want to be able to support the teams as much as possible and man it just it just came across a bit a bit odd and i think the team they had the best intentions in a way but it, it did feel a bit strange uh the way their statement was worded and yeah i kind of agree with, uh, with what christopher christopher said but i mean I don't think anything that I can say now has really been has not already been said. Um, it kind of sucks that this happened, and with a new system, there's always going to be challenges as well, especially when it comes to organizations and going from like also. Oh my god! Okay, more of a meta point here as well. Holy shit! Like keeping with the same format year to year to year in Overwatch esports challenge impossible. Like, <laughs> and if we had the same format throughout the years, obviously you'd expect a new one transitioning from Overwatch League to OWCS, but like there wouldn't be as many like uh, drama filled like bullshit uh, situations over the last few years if it wasn't for like all the changing formats um which is i think which kind of adds to this because it's always like why is there always a problem with this and it's just like well it's because all the fucking formats change all the fucking let, time, let's so. transition to that actually because we, you know okay. we have avril here as well it's been covering a lot of asia but uh you know you cover it all i was gonna ask it, for a format Avril. change so but you know if if we'd have stop please the ironically format i have a format changes. change i think format next year we do something different again regions, which, I mean, which which format is better because korea is significantly different from any year right now i mean there's but there's there's like pros and cons because like the, the the problem that rush brought up is very relevant it's like if i want to say that korea's system or asia system is better then you have to address what rush said which is like well if you get knocked out you got nothing to do until stage two which is after dallas so you got a long ass time doing absolutely nothing as a Korean player, which really sucks for an Asian player. Um, aside from that, I prefer like a longer stage round robin where you, like you get to sort of have this build up and you can see all the games, you can see all the teams develop through that, rather than like hit the reset button because it felt like NA ended really soon. Part of that might be the reason where we just didn't get to see enough games because it was a very condensed. It was both. The, it felt like both a drawn out schedule and a condensed schedule at the same time. If that makes sense, because like. We kind of like went through Swiss and group stage took a while and the playoffs was like, bam, gone. It's just finished. So um, that's why it like felt faster. So at the same time, but in, in any case, NA is just, NA EU just kind of like came and went and, you know, now they're going to roster shuffle again. Yeah. D but different teams are going to do whatever they're going to do. The top teams might stay together, maybe make some additions. Um, but I can see how that causes challenges for people to try and follow right it's like maybe more difficult to follow a format where like it's so volatile it comes and goes really quick the playoffs the last one week and then it's entirely gone and now teams are changing again for stage two it's like what is going on is an na view it's hard to follow and then you have the whole point system which has got a, all sorts of issues as well where like you know now you're looking at situations where um you're going to recruit you're going to roster reshuffle based on points and you know that hurts new players coming in that don't have points and this was a point that I think I heard one of the coaches bring up, might have been Gun, but it was, it was something essentially like, you know, this kind of, this the NAEU system hurts up and coming players or or players that didn't get, didn't do well enough the first stage. It's like, well, if they want to change team or you want to take a risk on a new player that didn't play stage one, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot because those guys didn't have points. So like, you know, points to some level push you towards the top end where, you know, you want to, you want to swap between players that actually have points. And the whole point system is also confusing, I think, for a lot of the, the fans as well. So yeah, I I still definitely like the Asia system better for all of those reasons, but I think they need to solve the the problem ideally of what do you do if you're eliminated and you got nothing to do until like what is it August apparently. So that's a huge issue. Yeah, I feel like the point system is kind of I mean it could be slightly different, right? Like you could change how you get points across the team or how they're transitioned between players and rosters. You know, um, I think you, you could do all of that. However. It's also a necessity if you're going to have like two separate qualifiers, you know, where like technically they both count, yeah. but like the first one is like worth less, you know, it's like, so, so for me, it's like, you need a, some kind of point system, right? Or else like, how the hell does the first qualify? You can't have the extra right. events that fill the time that Korea is like, they're waiting to play. Cause there's nothing to fill the time. You can't have those without, you know, something like a point system, which could be subtly different or whatever. I think those format things are 
it's like more normal for those to be challenging you know i don't know at least from my perspective um and like splitting up the regions like it's normal for owcs to have problems there the big format i want to see is just i want to see the loser gets any map pick they want of any mode um that korea has i think that's like a very good system that we should have every region have because you don't have to change the format format for that that's like within each match right the, there's like a bigger format of like what matches do you play and how do you qualify for the event but then each match how it's decided internally that, okay that's i think that's a good change like that's yeah, yeah, fine i think it makes the games a much whole closer system change is what yeah, i was I agree, kind of I referring agree. to Fuck the that, macro right. level changes are constant i mean to be yes. fair though we had some egregiously bad systems historically like we had to play a fourth map that doesn't count you know yeah. like, we did we did yeah and <laughs> then they was, that was we so slowly funny. fixed them you insight. already uh, lost now play one more game for us yeah it's like, that's, so, every that's map I mean, the big, so the big question the big question is like should asia and the western regions have a have the same format or not and i, I mean, mean I, macro, I I mean macro level I, I kind of like the Korean format, um, and I know people always like, oh, elimination games, you know, everything on the line all the time. But I think, you know, people who just want a consistent schedule and just tune into the broadcast Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. And so, you know, if, you're, if, if it's Korea matches and you're like, oh, it's freaking Vesta versus SPG, then yeah, you're going to get less viewers. But like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think it's a massive... I just think like both, to there's, for, there's merits and demerits to both, right? I feel like I we just don't that. have enough information yet to be like, this format is so fundamentally, like no one is like, I think some people are, can point out format and be like, this could just be linearly better by changing it that way, then we can, we should do those changes. But to me, it seems like every change has like a cost and benefit analysis to it. And so I just don't, um, I don't know. I feel like it's like, let's let it play out for a year and sort of see what the pain points are. And, and you know, maybe in Korea, it's like, okay, we have to make some adjustments. Maybe we have like another way for people to like you know last chance qualify into the thing or something they already like, have that they have but that like what, so what happens when the team eliminated help me understand Avril. and maybe i'm like so, other so, noobs so like why like, do the teams get eliminated for four or five months what's going on there yeah so like um so here's here okay here, this is the part of the asia slash korea format that's giga confusing so this is where some viewers that are listening is just like what the fuck is he talking about but this is actually how it works is all the teams they play through some qualify they go to a top nine and the top nine plays through a full round robin where you play every other single team one time that's what a round robin is i guess and um the bottom team from that round robin is entirely eliminated i actually have to bring up the liquipedia just to make sure i'm not capping right now and like i'm, I'm everything i'm saying is 100 percent true so the very bottom team number nine is eliminated the top four teams one through to four go to something called a seeding decider matches portion the next four teams, number five through eight, go to an LCQ, a last chance qualifier. And both of those events play parallel to each other. The seeding matches and the LCQ play parallel to each other. And they both go into what is the Korea playoffs. And the Korea playoffs then go to the Korea Asia LAN, which is where all the re regions in Asia meet together. And then the two winners from that go to Dallas. So there was a lot there. I, there was probably a lot to take yeah. in. There's like fucking five different levels of stages of, of qualify, qualifying into a qualifier into a qualify into a qualifier and a shitload of seeding games. And one of the other issues with the group format is there's no real reward for coming first to fourth. Like there was like we got to the stage where we finally got to week four. Like everyone's excited for WAC versus Falcons and the game literally didn't matter. I was in a call with Albert and shit. We're like, we're just discussing. We're like, so hang on a minute. It doesn't matter who wins, right? Because they all go through the next thing, which is exactly Wait, don't equal. you pick your opponent though? Isn't that that does matter? No, no, right no, no, no. So you pick Wack your opponent Falcon. as the one seed, no? So top, I think I think you do get like a one seed, and you do get like a higher seed. You get a buy. Seed is... Like, don't, isn't it seed one and two have a buy, and then? No, no, no. Okay, no, no. See, see and... when Jake's no? confused about this, you know it's a fucking confusing format. That's not <laughs> how it works. So the top four, WAC, Falcons, Yeti, FTG, go into what is the seeding decider matches. Um, maybe Solomon could even bring it up. It's just. It's no, that's what I mean. Like, if you right win the to... seeding, like let's say of this after the seeding deciders, you're like yeah, seed but there's one. A, but there are games before that. So the first time Wack and Falcons played in the regular season week four, that game literally didn't matter. Zero uh, because stakes. they're both going to be in the seeding decider. Because all the top, the top four teams are going to be in the seeding decider anyway. So it literally didn't matter who won that game. It was a completely pointless game. Yeah, despite the seeding it being deciders the most high are game. are just like a round robin again, right? Of the four. It's teams. another round robin of four teams to decide who gets the highest seed. And it's just like, bro, how many fucking seeding deciders are we going to have? How many bro, seeding games? I don't know. Are we I have? think that's like. I think that's fine, right? Because the Falcons whack. Everyone's going to play each other, right? And so, yeah, I guess if you're well, both I, guaranteed top four, you don't care where your seed is in I, the I seeding like, decider. But the seeding decider it. matters. I guess it does, but like I would like to see more point for the regular season because then the regular season you go from round robin to another round robin. So it's just like 
Well, it matters a lot more... if you're if you're top four and not top four. I agree. Exactly. Within the blocks, within top four, so yeah, it doesn't like this. matter. And that's, I think, that's a big I think flaw. Instead, but... I think even instead of eliminating the eighth best team, maybe you can still eliminate them. I don't care. But the, the, the first best team, I think should just go to land. I think if you win the group stage, you were the number one ranked team in the round robin group stage, the first round robin, you instantly go to land and that's it. Super high stakes. I would prefer something like that. You got to make the group stage mean something and not just like, okay, if we secure top four, we're good. And if we wanted the top two teams, half our games no longer matter because like we've won so much. It's like you can't drop out of the top four. Now these games are pointless. You don't want that. That's true. I feel like I'm more okay with the group stage not mattering than I'd rather like the later stuff matters more, no? Like I'd rather agree, the seeding agree, qualifier like, matter think, than the group stage. I think, and in I the think end, fans, most of the matches in the group stage matter. It's only a, sp a few of them within. So this is the pros and cons, right? This is where like it's mm -hmm. good for fans that we get regular games they can watch it tune all the time. But then it's also bad because they have a lot of games that are like low stakes. Where NA and EU have a lot more high stakes games, but then you have like way more volatility. So that's the pro and con. And, and I, I guess. guess NAU is also more open, right? So if you really want an open circuit, then. You know, I mean, I think in Korea they don't really get. I think it's they don't really get signups in Korea. It's just not how it is because people just know. I mean, they don't even like they don't sign up for that shit because they just don't want. No, everyone knows. You know, like they know how good the real teams are, and so there's no like. Well, I don't think you get I mean, like the casual be... gamers in Plat signing up for the open tournament in Korea. I still, culturally, it doesn't happen. Well, they I mean, so, so there were some great storylines, you know, Korean teams coming out of tier, tier 2 back in the day with like okay, Apex, wait, wait, hold on, you know. Hold on. Tier 2 Apex is different like, than, like, than, than the open. They did like the Golden Road thing, you know? Like, they're, tier, they're... tier 2 is very different than the, was Apex. the, the Swiss stage. Is what yeah, I mean. yeah, that was Apex, yeah. And also, that... that was like, back in the day, things were different, but I think now it's like, I don't think there's really that much demand in Korea for like open teams because I think generally people just play until they're like good enough to be on a super high ranked team. Like yeah, I mean there team. might not be a Swiss stage we should... opportunity with like two fifty six teams, but I, I, I still mean, think I an open. I mean, I guess there is an open part to it already, but I'm, I'm just know. saying like now they've done one thing. They've done one stage, quote unquote yeah. stage, for this Asia playoffs, whereas we're already starting our second stage over oh, it's a split you know, and asia's doing splits i guess because they're doing like one one massive split and then a second massive split technically nau also have splits they just split their splits into two stages and i'll just yeah. add one thing about the um the, the the qualification thing and signups this is where like asia unfortunately doesn't have face it the face it league which would be really good yeah. for like developing those yeah. new players coming through it would be super yeah. sick for them because yeah i mean even if you're if you're an naau you're like well even if we don't have OWCS going on right now, we still have the FASIC League, uh, which, you know, that has huge stakes. Um, you know, you can get the qualifier for the Esports World Cup, which is a lot I of think, price money. Honestly, the, the bigger stakes for FASIC League is actually, it's more about the base than it is about, like, OWCS. I mean, obviously... Are we changing teams, topics yet, or...? For the Just pro wanna... teams... I'm talking about FASIC League. So, like, for the pro teams, of course, they want to go to, to to Overwatch World Cup, you know, like, or Esports World Cup. And, and... um so like that that's like another elite tournament for them but i think the real exciting thing about the future is like the lower division face it leagues where we'll, we'll see more like up and coming players play um which i don't know it's funny like we like we you know i was playing i'm playing some scrims i'm gonna play in the face it league myself um with a team and stuff and and it's just it's interesting like you know you can there's definitely i think there's a lot of people who are skilled enough to be competitive in whether it's master tier or the division below it you know and i think that'll be the key for the success of the of the scene really is that it goes beyond just the elite level of competition and we get that bigger base of like you know back in the day of like you know like big land events byoc you know like that's not necessarily what it'll be but that vibe of like many levels of players are competing not just the ones who there has to be events more than just for the people who actually can win it all and be the best in the world there has to be events that sort of celebrate and give opportunities to compete for sure, yeah. for like still like players who love the game and are really passionate about it not, probably not people who are like truly casual gamers people who like probably play overwatch as their main game but a lot of those people getting them to compete and getting them yeah. involved in the ecosystem is so critical and, and korea would would really benefit from that but the the sad reality is because the region is split up where like efg get nau and, and wdg like have the rights to asia unless wdg come up with something similar then it's just like which it just doesn't seem like problems. it'll happen there because was... EFG is like, I mean, they run face it. Like they already no. run CS. There was tournaments before though. Like I think people are forgetting um Gen G S Gen G B in Korea Open Cups. They don't run them anymore. Um it, no not Gen G weren't running them. I was just teams that were competing in the yeah. yeah, yeah, like, there are three teams at one point. Korea Open oh, fuck's sake. Open 
cups. A gen fucking gen G. I'm trying to find this on goddamn gen G S. Uh, gen S, Gen A, Gen B, and they had Tiger yes. Nation. They had four teams. Yes, they had four and, fucking. And then teams. they had Soul Dynasty. It was dumb, stupid. But Gen G S, Gen G B, they used to play in Korea Cups, and that was like the that was like the more like open kind of style tournaments. They were just open cups, and they just people just fucking used to play in them. Like that was it. And that is maybe what they're missing now. Is that kind of our version well, of? Or like Cross their roots. version of like the faces and stuff. Crossroots and Korea is like kind of I, w- I don't want to say dead, but like there's very little opportunities if you're like a new player trying to come on through. Like you're trying to yeah, because there's no open div anyway. Yeah. Your open div is now just qualification to OWCS, which is like yeah. as we discussed, not particularly attractive to those yeah. players. It's so they they rough. need some. They need their own face at league badly right now. Yeah. Or they're uh, equivalent to face at league rather. What is the operational cost of running a face at league in Korea? I wonder. They already have the platform. They just have to, I guess, deal with. Well, I mean, you, yeah, they need all the possible. staff. Like, I don't it's know not, if they have no, all no. the Korean infrastructure. It's not. It's not got nothing to do with that. They can turn it on today. The problem is, I don't, you don't. It's not even necessarily a problem, but it's like the regions are divided up into. I'm pretty sure they have rights. I'm pretty sure EFG have rights to NAEU, oh, and Asia, yeah, and Asia, sure. and WDG, WDG have rights to Asia. Yeah, so yeah. face it would be treading on WDG's turf by. Treading so it would need to be stuff. WDG opens or something then. For them to but you, you need to do something they needed they need yeah. to set something up for korea that's what they need interesting to all right well the koreans are not having a good time in 2024 trying to compete in overwatch uh limited opportunities uh well, the top koreans are doing fine it's the <laughs> well yeah yeah, yeah. The, the the very top koreans sure uh they're doing fine but you know oh you mean the very best players in the world yeah the very best players in the world yeah, wait yeah. What, what is this what is this solomon did you cook that's that's it. That's basically how Korea works. Yes, it's confusing mm-hmm. as fuck. Yes. Yeah. It's not good. So there's the group stage are... into two separate brackets, into one big bracket, into the Asia main event. I'm gonna be honest. If a fucking like when I look at brackets and like rule <laughs> sets for this shit, is it is just like sands? it's just fucking wingdings. I'm just looking at fucking wingdings every wingdings. single time I look at br- brackets and like doing all this shit. I'm just like, bro, I don't fucking get it half the time. Like, I- I'm just kind of dumb. I think. I think that's kind of a, <laughs> my, that's kind of a me problem. I think when it comes to brackets and stuff and like issue. how things qualify with different points, like with all the. When we were in Overwatch League, like the playoffs and like these point systems and shit, I'm like, I'm glad other people understand because I am not 100% sure at all. Like, I didn't show I'm giving up on the circuit point match. system. I'm not going to lie. lie. I... Like, it did get confusing, right? And like, th- I think that is the problem when it's not like I, or I work on the product and it's not like, or I technically I don't work on APAC to be fair, but if I can't understand how this kind of format works, the everyday, like, uh, like everyday Joe, Joe Overwatch, like, then probably not Dude, also going to understand. I watched the whole thing and it took me until like maybe week three to fully exactly. understand it because I was like, Dude, exactly. what the and fuck? And if is Avril's this? not getting it, no one's getting it. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. That was actually something so like when we worked broadcast for the longest time in the Overwatch League, that was actually like one of the things that like everything should be distillable to the most simple thing ever. Like if, it, if you can't yep. show it clearly on a graphic, on it's one too slide. complicated. On a single slide graphic? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so exactly. with the circuit points and like, oh, we didn't play our players to maximize the amount of circuit points. So now we can't pick up this player because they don't have circuit points, which leads us to not having the, an inferior amount of circuit points going to stage two where the points double. It's just like, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot going on here. It, I, I don't doubt that it makes sense somewhere and uh, that it might even be fair, but it is, it is, it is complicated and you do need to read the rules uh, and, and do I, a lot of I math. I also think... I also think the Asia format is maybe slightly better for viewers, but I think the NAEU format is better for players because they get more opportunities. Yeah, yeah, you I agree can get with knocked that. out early and then you can come back in. You can make a new sure. roster. Sure. You, you yeah. can, otherwise, you're like your LFO. You've had the unluckiest run ever. You lose straight away, and then what do you do? You just not play until August, like the Koreans. It's just like it's ridiculous, right? So. I was always curious what a what a what a Swiss stage would look like with like a big group group stage i know we have swiss qualifiers already but like what if we had you know eight teams or however many teams put into a huge group instead and then you do swiss within the the group wouldn't that just um, be round robin uh well it would be round robin but what you avoid is uh pointless matches um and you also 
um make sure that you get more even matches because you have if if, if two teams are 0 and 3 they're they're going to play a more even match because they both suck whereas you have the 0 and 3 team playing like the best team in the region you know and um so that was always a thing I, I i voiced heavily like the last couple of years of the awards league because i was like i don't want to tune in and just watch the la valiant go toe-to-toe -to -toe with houston mm -hmm. outlaws or you know i want i'd rather see valiant play vegas eternal you know because that's a more even matchup and that's going to be a better matchup because of that right even though the quality is not as high it's going to be more even and more entertaining so more matches like that is better for the broadcast but i don't know i yeah i'm i don't i don't love the current format i think it could make a few adjustments and i think it could look a lot better but but we should probably answer this very important question because this is the one we skirt around a lot now it's like but should the two regions of west and east share the same format regardless of what it is i should think so. that i i think that is like the minimum right you I should have like the same though, format the, all the on, organizers says, you're gonna have efg and wgg run it they're not gonna yes. agree to do the exactly well, same that. Thing. I mean, and can also just multiple say, regions. I, I can still i can still ask for that right. even though you can't do it's that. not gonna happen i don't think you can do that without like blizzard, also, blizzard can ask for it just like Japan, Pacific, everything else, and they got to culminate at some point. Like, I just don't think it's it's possible. I, like, in a dream I world, having... I think you should have the same format across all regions. Sure, but I think no, like it's not going to Actually, I agree with Jack, especially with how different the regions are. Like, you look at like, yeah. Japan. Japan needs to have like its own little thing going on because, like, let's be honest, we don't want like it's been fun seeing the Japanese teams play each other. Been, you're developing a local scene there, but what are you going to do? You're going to have Japan and Korea play their own qualifiers? Like in the end. You know, if you're going to do like a big elimination qualifier, it's going to have to include Japan and Korea. And then like, you're, you know, they're not going to have good games for, for the Japanese teams. You know? No, know. they would they would just hypothetically have their own stage one, stage two thing like NAEU does. And they would then qualify so, from that. Into so it's what? It's Asia Japan. Is Pacific including Japan or separate? Pacific is a different region. Korea? It's Korea, yeah, Japan, Pacific region, are three separate yeah. regions. So they get three. So there's going to be five regions total. No, 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 no. They it's Japan, Korea. And Pacific play stage one, stage two, just like NA and EU, but they don't qualify to Dallas. They qualify to the Asia land in Korea, and then from the Korea Asia land, they qualify to Dallas as they are now. So that stays consistent. Would be I'm not saying I advocate for that, but that would be the example. Yeah, but, but wouldn't that still be a different format? Because then you have two layers of lands. Well, it would be required. They would, would be required to have two layers of lands. Otherwise, you have the situation you're talking about where Pacific just goes straight to Dallas. Well, my so, point is, my point is that exactly like like you can't have the same format, right? But at format, least, but, then, right? but, like, like, that's what my only least, point is just that you can't have least, the same format across. But at the least, board. it would only be the one difference instead of like majorly different across the board, right? Like having just a one land difference is way different to like having like a way more of a difference where there's round robins, there's seating matches, whatever. It's LCQ. That's that's a completely different thing, right? So you get closer. I guess in the end, I just don't think it's that big of a deal because I think in the end, the point is for the fans to like also probably mostly follow not every yeah. region. You know, I don't think the point of the system is that like give the super fans 24 hours a day of content that they can probably watch so Avril never sleeps again. Like, I don't think that's the point. <laughs> I think the point is actually for I can agree each regional, like to have their own regional fans and like, you know, maybe like I'll, I'm a big fan. So maybe I'll watch NA and EU. Or maybe I'll watch some Korea games a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, but I, but I don't think they're trying to make this something for you're supposed to follow it all. I think that's just not I realistic. Think they, I think they also have to build the, the the formats around the broadcast scheduling, which is why even within Asia, it's not consistent. Pacific goes straight into a double Elon bracket. They don't even play round robin, whereas Japan and Korea play round robin because they have to fit it within a, a seven day a week broadcast schedule. They broadcast every single day, right? There's not enough days in the week, so mm -hmm. it would probably be weird if they try to do like the system in NAEU where it's mostly weekend focused. What does that mean? Does that mean Japan plays the knockout matches? I guess they already did that. I don't know. The point is, is like, I think, I think scheduling does play into the formatting as well, but yeah, I don't know. We don't have to align the two regions, but like maybe a little bit more aligned would help, but I guess you can't perfectly align them. No. All right. I feel like we should move on from uh, this entire conversation. Do you guys have any more thoughts about wealth? Oh my God, Blood you've actually made it I longer, am. Solomon. Wingdings, wingdings. Look this, at those wingdings. There's I'd a lot going on. I had a final thought about the, I don't know, maybe this is too far away now, but the XOTM thing. And oh, it's yeah. just that, like, I think blaming format differences is not acceptable enough. Like, it's not just, it's not a good enough excuse. I think, like, people should, orgs need to pay attention and not pull the trigger on spending money until they have like 
this is going to sound stupid, but like actual real confirmation. I know they did get baited, or at least TM absolutely got baited by them, and they thought they had confirmation. They didn't. They talked I to will the wrong say person. it is it is wild for EXO to be like, we heard from a player who heard from a player. <laughs> yeah, that this was is okay. Yeah, and it's like. I feel like you should just do one layer of double check on that before you buy a plane ticket, you know? Like just... it's, it's, it, is, it is rough for EXO because they're like a small org who yeah, don't have yeah. it is. good financial backing. And so they might not have just... the experience to know that like, ah, well, Possibly we so. and, double check and, these rules. And like, this is, this is money that like really fucking hurts EXO, right? So this is yeah. probably why they, they, they had the response yeah. they had. Which uh, I, yeah, really I mean, I told yeah, you, this it, money really fucking hurts them. I can it, see why um, they feel the way they do. I just also think it's like, it does. It does suck. Maybe there's an argument to change the rules. It's one of those mistakes you do once and then you'll never do it again. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, I, I would you know, it happens to all of us in life. Uh, you know. So uh, yeah, it 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 sucks for them. No no doubt about that. Uh, it sucks for EXO for sure, especially because they've invested so much recently. Yeah. Um, Just blame ants. Ants stole Chase Torch, and this is what started everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Blame ants. Blame ants. This is what. <clears throat> um. All right. Do you uh, do you want to cover OWS Korea real quick, Avril? Since we, was, we were on the topic anyway, they got their uh, they got their bracket being played. This is just um, Avril's corner week. of the week. Avril's play check corner. OWS Korea. You are uh, the the, the, the yeah. biggest expert our in Korean the scene on the Asian up next, region. Uh, yeah. We'll go to Avril uh, for yeah. our Korean correspondent. Live. Hold up. Hold up. I'm getting word on the street right now. Streets are talking about Korea. <laughs> the streets are streets talking. Are talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're borrowing memes from Valorant. Uh, um, so yeah, you got the playoffs bracket here. Uh, where two teams, no, three teams will qualify for the uh, Asia. I think it's that it's that complicated, is it? No, well, um, yeah. Many? It is. It's top three teams go to stage one main event, which is the Asia land, and the fourth place team goes to the wild card, yeah. which is like a combined region online thing where I think one additional team gets to go to the land. Um, so, so how many Korean teams will be in Dallas? Two, two Korean teams in Dallas. Out of, after event. all of this, after all of this, so yes. in the end, it's still top two from Asia, which is top two from Korea. So yes, a bunch of fancy stuff, giving you extra shots. There's a, if you're there's, not. A, there's a lot of yeah. Solomon's cooked up a giant thing. Dude, to this basically is actually crazy. This teams. is great, actually. This is really great. Um, you gotta post. So this. I do have to say though, like in, in a, a way, in a way, Solomon Solomon might have maybe even on purpose tried to make this slightly more confusing <laughs> by drawing it like this, but. I don't know, left to right works. Liquipedia just go top to bottom. I actually, I actually love this. This is very... Like, no, I respect that. It. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. This but, is um, great. So we finished off our group stage. We finished off the seeding decided matches. Finished off the LCQ. Um, I think the one big thing to talk about is Runaway bombing out, which is how we got yeah, to the yeah, mag situation sucks. as well. Because they, they lost fast. Runaway went from looking like... Well, they, they, they finished top five. They were literally fifth place. They were two points in terms of match differential behind Yeti. I think in the first two to three weeks, Runaway looked like solid top four. They looked like they could finish top four easily. Um, and then they just got, they got overtaken. They started becoming shit. I think from the Malga meta onwards, they were never the same. They did not look good in the Malga meta at all. And then you go into um, LCQ. Decay's team Genesis steps up massively. And Runaway can't compete. I don't know if they were just boomed after that, but they... they Decay, if like, I go. They looked like they just weren't able to grasp meta the macro was not particularly clean um i had gumbra on my co-stream for the poker face runaway game and runaway was just getting blast they were playing like a total mess um you, this is also the type of team where like you know i've been talking up Lil p profit for a while because he was looking like maybe the best hit scan in korea after lip or maybe even equivalent to lip but he was having an off performance as well maybe that's indicative of the team's run where it's like if if your team requires profit to carry you to win then you've got some problems to deal with there and um profit was not having his day on that uh, particular LCQ match day. Um, I think worst of all is they actually got knocked out off stream. If I'm not mistaken about that because like the first round, the first day of matches were played off stream. Of the modern Overwatch is getting knocked think, out off stream. Oh, yeah, Sojourn has the VODs, right? What? Yeah, she has oh, VODs. Also, I, I did co-stream these. I got given replay codes. So what I was doing is I was watching the replay codes live. Um, so a map would finish. The admins would give me a replay code. I would instantly watch that on stream. That's how. That's this is how the games were being streamed on the day. So, um, um, yeah, I couldn't get lobby access in time, so we had to do it this way. Um, Runaway being blown out this quickly is definitely the story to tell. And then Genesis, what well, Genesis baited everyone by by convincing us, like, hey, you beat Runaway. You're a good team now, right? Okay, you, we're, we're a good team. And then they lose us in prison. 
and they lose to poker face like oh shit so genesis they baited us by by looking like good a good team and then not being a good team either um you, you gotta bring up this vote i sent you the vote solomon in the in the discord this is not this is not a runaway losing to poker face off stream but uh when w losing to genesis as well with kalios playing support <laughs> i mean this, oh, is, so this, story, this is so cursed <laughs> so this this is one of the games that got played off stream so what happened here to my knowledge is i guess this is kind of speculative as well marker was late so kalios filled the first map and then marker came in map two onwards so i'm pretty sure marker was just late he had something on i don't know maybe Marco had to finish a ranked game and he just couldn't join in time that's so yeah. crazy. No, There's no fucking shot. There's no fucking shot. Ain't like no oh, inside a joke, yeah. yeah. Runaway did win this map with Kalios on, on supports, but it, it was still hilarious in the moment to see Kalios crazy. play play Ana. <laughs> crazy. Bro. Yeah, they didn't they did not look good with Kalios and Ana, sadly. <laughs> to no one's surprise. <laughs> actually, I, I would have actually like totally believed that Kalios they, they were just like last minute like Frick it, we'll put Kalios in support. I could have seen it. With, so, with so the state like, of the mental of this team, I could have seen it. Some like Lep Renko situation on MAD. It's like, I right, rank Lep, you're out. Map two, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. the Lep first time are, are, are they making a new team? <laughs> yeah, I, both yeah, of them? I saw that. They can yeah. be good. They have Seeker and Zira and. Well, um, who's the team? We'll, get, we'll get to NA. Ariel? We'll get to NA. I'll just finish up. I think the biggest win for Korea in the last week or so has been Yeti. Yeti has been like so fucking good i've been tweeting up a storm about them Vipe is my new goat mm. um you know this this guy this guy has just been unbelievably finally. good he's finally um, been unlocked Vi bro. viper with help dude he was already good this is i don't i don't know if you guys agree with this but i'd actually be curious what jake thinks about this statement but i i generally think a player is extremely impressive when they're on a very shit team and not only do they look like the best player in that team but they are actively carrying that team in a way where they're competitive with teams that they should not ever be competitive with just because of this one guy's impact. And that's like an unbelievable mark of a good I, player. Like, that means you're an insane player. Overwatch. Exactly. Like, I, I think Yeti just look pretty good as a team, no? I think their movements are good, their ults are good. Like, there's overall... I saw Shanghai. I saw Shanghai last oh, year. Oh, 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 you mean... Viper. Yeah, 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 like, Viper yeah. on Shanghai last year did, did some Omega carrying. On a team, like, that was shitting the bit that hard. It was pretty dope, but Viper looked that good. Yeah. Is the first sign that this guy's got some insane talent. And then he comes to Yeti this year with a team that with some actual, you know, the real hitters on this team. And suddenly Yeti are top four. And they actually beat Wack as well. They were the first team to beat Wack, and Wack are otherwise undefeated, except for that one loss to Yeti. And that is my my recommended game for everyone to watch at some point. Mm -hmm. Watch it on stream, review it. Every single fan should if you if there's one career game you need to like check out, Wack versus Yeti in I think week four. Oh no, so this was the this was in the seeding side of game, but it was the um this was, was this March. past week. Yeah, it was this past week. It was the first game of the Seed of Decider matches. The opening, the opening match of the Seed of Decider matches. Yeti versus Wack. Insane. And then game. they went to map five against Falcons too. So Exactly. Um, so Yeti is Yeti is doing something special right now, for sure. Yeah. And then they lose the FTG. So they lose the Violet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Classic. Classic. Yeah. Baby. yeah. Uh, Violet is the GOAT. Yeah. It, okay. it was interesting to see in the the Falcons whack matchup as well. This this new format kind of come into play as well, where um, Falcons did lose three uh, one uh, against Whack, but they it was so jarring to see them play Ilios and then just like oh we're gonna go to Havana and you're like wait Havana second map <laughs> I thought that was absolutely hilarious and they came out and like held held close with the uh, Symmetra. I think I this believe. is so good. I think this is such a good format actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like letting um, teams pick any map. Well, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, it's like really interesting. I, I much prefer this, I think, than the static. It's way more yeah. interesting because the map picks yeah. are there's a, there's a major competitive cool integrity fun. flaw with the current system in MA and EMA, which is just, oh, congrats. You get to pick a flashpoint. Like, yeah. it's literally meaningless. They're the same map. Nothing is really, I mean, they're marginally different. You're saying, yeah, that the choice versus is like hybrid and S4, where you have modes versus drastic... in some modes is pointless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. exactly, exactly. There's like really significant differences. Like, the costs are really different. And there's not enough maps in the ma other map types. But regardless, even if it were, there were more maps in the other map types, even if there were plenty of Flashpoint maps, I have a hard time believing that the Flashpoints are ever going to be as different from one another as the attack defend maps, just the no nature way. of the game. Mm -hmm. And so and so I really think they should just implement this system. It just makes the games closer. It means if you lose your, your first map, you hit them with your number one very best shot. You know, and it's not, there, there's no like, we've got to survive. We gotta win one map just so we can like have a chance to play our good map. 
you know, I don't. Well, I think that's really bad. So I think this this is there's been way too many three O's, and this is a way to reduce the amount of three O's. I just don't see why not do this. We did. We we instantly reduced the amount of three O's. So I think yeah. it works yeah. across yeah. the board in both LCQ and single sided matches. It worked. And in this this should come in. I really um, like. I, there I will were, say one there thing. were two three O's between the seeding decider and the last chance qualifier. There were two three O's. Only the two. rest were three ones or three twos. Exactly. That's crazy. Um, I will say that the, the problem that you brought up, Jake, does exist in a smaller way where, like, let's say everyone saves Flashpoint until map five, which I think is actually what happens oh, sometimes. If you are the team that ends up picking map five, map five ends up being like a dead pick as well. So that it do, it will happen when you get to the end if I everyone mean, just avoids Flashpoint. It's fine, but like, that's much preferable to the current exactly. system where it's guaranteed to happen every it single game. It is so preferable, game. yes. And Correct. also, even if Flashpoint's not like the most valuable pick. You know, if you were like a really competent Flashpoint team and you feel like you're going to win on Flashpoint, you might still pick Flashpoint just to play your best map. Like, it's not that crazy to avoid it. Maybe yeah. if you're like the elite teams probably won't. They'll probably pick the, their best map of like Escort and Hybrid, whatever they feel like is like most significant. Well, I, but, yeah. I still think Flashpoint and Push should be put together in the same pool to pick from. So that you're gonna four no, no, or five maps. Every map in the same pool. That's what I think. Or every map of the pool, right? Well, like, that's what I mean. Is don't you don't have to pick the certain mode in a row. That's the problem. It, Flashpoint. I mean, I guess the only problem is literally okay. Map five, your pick isn't that valuable, but I don't think that's a big problem. That's like you're you're on map five, all right? Flashpoint for map five. Well, the thing is, one what eventually someone will have to pick a mode or game or map that's not valuable because you're eventually gonna get to Flashpoint. Well, exactly, exactly. Two, three, four, five. Eventually, but, that's just yeah. not that big of a deal, is in my view. It's like just a Compared minor. Compared to where we are, correct. Right, because um, it's just it's like the current system is that and a lot more worse shit. So this is like okay, in the worst case scenario, it's still better than it is right now in the best yeah. case scenario. I'm just saying it would be better if they combine push and flashpoint together into the same pool to pick from. But then would be, how do you pick a fifth map? Like what's the fifth map? Uh you either go back to control or we look at what this new five CP is. And that then five CP we have the, other modes, but I don't think playing a second control is good either. I think that's also bad because I think control... five CP you're gonna run into the same issue, there's only two maps as well. Actually, um an important point got brought up as well, where it's where like um I think this new picking format solves for when we eventually have six game modes because we're about to get five CP as well. And eventually you get to six game modes, like, well, how do you fix this? And this format kind of solves for that issue. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind it at all. I, I'll just finish talking about um, one last thing in Korea, and then we're basically there. So Falcons Whack was the final game of senior side of matches, and in a lot of ways, I think this kind of just was a bit of a repeat of the last Falcons Whack game, where once again it it, it legitimately looks like Jumbo and Max. Best tank line in Korea. Hearing a little bit of slow pitch from Jake. All good. He's enjoying the show. Um, <laughs> and, um, My bad. And, um, what is this? The fucking eating podcast? We got Avril eating McDonald's and Jake eating. Jake I don't know what. Jake just woke up, bro. What are you saying? It's the morning for me. Breakfast. I don't know it's what Jake's salad. excuse is. Salad. My bad, guys. He's it's cutting. 4 he's, 20. He's... Who eats at 4 20? Me. People do other things. All right, okay. Well, we sorted that. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> this is an important. So, Let's cancel the. I, one segment. I, I, I think, I think, Humpin and Smurf, uh, they, they don't look good right now. I don't know what's going on. I'm not saying they're shit players, but like, man, compared to Max Jumbin, you, t you take Max Jumbin right now as the better tank duo. Hundred percent. It's like it's wild to me. He's saying also played out of his mind this series. Wacker also doing some like Krusty's cooking real hard in the series where like he's he's playing a bunch of Sigma Bastion. They're trying to copy EU. I think EU strats have infected Korea, genuinely. They're whack of playing Symmetra really? and Bastion now. Yeah, no I shit. Mean, yeah, that's ridiculous. You know. Um, I mean, these comps are legit. Like, the Sim Bastion comp can be legit, you know? I know, I feel but like, like Korea, the meta, is, the meta is genuinely really open right now. Wait, was that with the Reinhardt? I saw some Reinhardt. What, what was oh, that, that was about? Dongak. That was Dongak. Oh, yeah, yeah, Reinhardt's Yeti. for like spawn camping Sigma and Havana, so they can't play Sigma. No, no, no. Yeti, like, Yeti legitimately ran Reinhardt Reinhardt also, right? other places. Yes, the Rhino also got ran on Sarasa. Oh my god, dude. Dong was Whenever cooking. I Dong see Rhino, I'm just that like... That is good. Did they win yeah, that shit? No, that's just I proof. So. That's proof. <laughs> that doesn't if look if good. If you play Rhino, it's proof. You're bad. Like, I don't know. Spawn Keeping Amada is a legit Rhino strat, but I don't know if there's any other legit Rhino strats in the entire game. So yeah, he, ran, sure. he ran it on like Midtown A as well. So like oh, Yeti no, 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 got Rhino pilled. That's why Yeti didn't win versus... It was the same when Runaway picked it on freaking push. I was just like, Runaway, you picked you picked Rhino. Like, this is not good. Like, Mad cooked there. Mag's yeah, like, but it's Mag, bad. This what, it's this, bad this, this, cooking. This, well, well, this is what Mag's trying to do. Mag's like, if I lose this game now by throwing on Ryan, I can go to Europe. So that's probably like, the well, he actually Mag could. to <laughs> Europe. Yeah, I don't think no, bro. I, be real. You, you better learn European, buddy. <laughs> you better learn European. <laughs> 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 you chatting? Um, <laughs> so we're about to head into 
Korea playoffs, where I think now, if firmly, you would power rank WAC as the number one team in Korea. I think before it was like, oh, could it be WAC? Could it be Falcons? Maybe WAC just beat Falcons. Maybe it was a bit of a fluke. Now it's like, no, WAC could probably best him. Despite losing to Yeti, WAC still look like the most consistent team. They 3 0 at FDG, the fourth best team. They 3 1 Falcons. WAC just looked like by far the best team. And um, it would take another Viper MVP level performance to take down WAC again. And that, that matchup will happen again because they're on the same side of the bracket. So Falcons and WAC on separate sides of the bracket. FTG and Falcons on the same side. Yeti and WAC on the same side. Do you, know, do you know, before we move on from this segment, do you know what the deal is with, like, to be selected? Does WAC get to pick between the winners of the quarterfinals? Yeah, so they get to pick from... Yeah, they get first choice... Oh, here we go. Thank you. Same <laughs> this is... <laughs> Solomon is cooking. Everything turns back stream. to Geo, I guess, sir. Oh Wack my chooses, god. WAC chooses the winner of the quarterfinals, whichever team they want from the winner of those games. And Falcons takes the remainder. Yeah, I mean, I guess you pick from the gamer, huh? If they, they beat Poker Race. And then um, there's a third place well, they match. Pick, they pick whoever they think they have a better shot versus. Or, they, or Moon just egos out. You know, you know how Moon plays. Moon 2021, he just picks Shock straight away. Moon might, Moon might just pick Yeti straight away. Go for the salty run back. That's what he does. Mm. I feel like those teams are pretty closely matched, no? Like from the gamer Yeti, I don't think it's that big of a difference. Probably, yeah. I think yeah. maybe Yeti are far more willing to play dive because of Dong X Zero Pool and because of Viper's strength. Yeah, it might just be so. like stylistic preference for yeah. whack, whatever matchup they like more. Exactly, yeah. There's not like an obvious strength difference between them. Dong X, by the way, has had a real, aside from the Ryan, the Ryan is c- cooking too hard. But Dong X had a real resurgence. This guy, like, Dong X, really he, good. he owned. He owned last year, too. Yeah, but he had a bit of a down start to the year, right? That's true. Well, yet he was just not good. Right well, he also had a he had also had a rough ending. To be fair, As the, everything in the middle was good, but like the start and the Maybe. ending. I was... think Dong had played well. I think he played well. I don't think it was. Uh, Chio disagrees. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> heard tell. <laughs> so, um, yeah, some rough endings. That's that's for sure. Uh, do you do you want to move on? What I was going to ask you if you had any final thoughts on the Face It League, because um, I don't know it, to what extent we talked about that. But uh... yeah, so we should talk about the actual announcement, right? We should get the announcement out and like maybe go over the details because I don't, I don't think the viewers who didn't see the announcement actually know what the Face It League is. They're probably a little confused. It's a good fucking time, is what it is. Oh, it's a good fucking time, says Joss. <laughs> Are you playing? Are you impatient? Am I gonna play? Money? Yeah. Oh, I don't have a team, bro. Probably not. But um, LFT, bro. I'll be, get, I'll, be watching, I'll be I'll be watching. I'll be watch. I'll be I'll be. In, I got demoted yesterday, so I don't think I'll be fucking any finding any motherfucking teams with Masters three again. Oh, yeah, I was Masters think... one like two days ago, dude, and now I'm back to fucking Masters three. Oh, dude, I'm gonna, I played support there, for the I first so time. I was so close to GM five. <laughs> they support for the first time in in two years, and I'm GM three or GM four. <laughs> no, it's it's a uh, it's actually a scam. It's ass. It's OB, Pe- it's people OB. are having such a hard time ranking up this season. I got my no, coming into my chat all the time. It's good. That's you, a good Lucio thing. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, it doesn't. It's not hard to rank up. This is just how the system should have been from the get go. Uh, the new yeah, we had too many players on system. GM1 where it was like yeah like was, dude it was the many... easiest time like obviously not easy for everybody but like GM1 was the easiest fucking rank to guys where if you were just in GM the amount of people in GM1 compared to like the rest of GM um just night and day it was a million people in GM1 it, it was ridiculous I like this system I really really like this system there was a point where support you could be ma- I think you still can be masters one and you can be in top 500 like it's it's pretty sick actually it feels way more like holy shit, like, you need to get higher than you've ever gone before, <laughs> like, uh, almost like 5k SR peak, like, it feels like that again, where it fe- feels limitless, because no one's There's a rank to play more than isn't yet. only the top 500 rank, which yeah, is just kind of, it feels not awesome. that meaningful, because it's just changed, it's a little bit random, it's like, at the start yeah. of the season, it's pretty easy to get top 500. And, and people then... moaning and yapping about them being fucking, like, I'm Diamond 3 now, and I was Masters 2 before, get fucking good, motherfucker, just play more. Also, I everybody like it's kind also of like fine. It's just went you just have to understand if anyway. you were Diamond Three and or you were Masters whatever Four and now yeah. you're Diamond Three. It's like that's basically the same skill level. You know, like you're playing really with the same people again. We just yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't like, like get worse at D rank. You're basically just at the same skill level you were before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you have not got worse. Yeah. It's just so like, guys. Oh. Basically. 
Oh yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> so, it's a good time. We're just yeah. like wound up jaws like a toy, and he just went off <laughs> on the ranks. I think we should play Mercy here. Is probably what I. Yeah. Anyway, just mention mention Mercy. Jaws goes on tangent. Anyway, oh, I wasn't even. All right, uh, let, let me see if I get this right for you, Avril. Let me see if I recap this right for you. All right, Face It League, three seasons a year. There's four different divisions. There's Master, Expert, Advanced, and Open. There are qualifiers for the Masters League. Um, if you think that you're already good enough to, to be in Masters, you can go ahead and you can sign up for the qualifiers. There are more regions than in OWCS. So there's NA, EMEA, South America, OCE. So Let's you go, can baby. They're so bad. In the Faces League. And yeah, there's uh, three seasons uh, throughout the year. So, uh, you right. know, this is meant to be more separated. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you're if you not the greatest gamer in the world, but you just want to compete, you can sign up. You can compete in the Open and the, the Advanced Divisions. And uh, you get to play matches against similarly ranked opponents. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, sign up for OWCS and be like, well, we're going to compete for fun. And then, and then you're like, wait, we got to play some... ends in the first round yeah, of Twist. Exactly. That sucks. So now you actually get to play similarly ranked opponents. So uh, there's a yep. small subscription fee to compete. But did I get that right Avril. yeah that, that, that was basically it i mean you did read the brochure but that, that was correct you yeah. read what the do you mean what, what am i supposed to deviate as the no, host i'm joking no, you were supposed <laughs> to read the brochure and then reiterate on plat chat then get something wrong and then it gets posted to reddit and then completely taken out of context no, and then it no, goes no, to twitter no, no, no. back to so reddit this, back to i have Platchat. not read as much reddit this week yeah, I'm, did you, you didn't bring you didn't bring up the price pool by the way it's 170k uh, yeah. usd did i not oh my god i'm 170k usd and it's Mini split back. between four regions, but it's every season. So there's three seasons this year. So they're doing 170k three times this year across all just four. Ridiculous. And you qualify like, for Esports World Cup. Yeah, and it's obviously, you, yeah. There's a, this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I he, go on. Should I? Who who wants to go? I've just, just, just fucking speak. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, you qualified. Yes, you you qualified Esports World Cup. So the top three teams from like NA and EU get to go. And then um, one from South America, one from OC, which is an incredible. Like the top OC, team from OC baby. gets a direct, and South America gets a direct <laughs> qualification to Esports World Cup, where basically if they show up somewhere in the top 16 and they come last, they're going to get a huge payout just for showing up. So that's, that's a it's, it's a Aussies big fucking rise deal. up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> now, what are the this, region restrictions? Can I compete in South America? Two, Yo, imports, put me in. two imports, two imports, same as uh, Give me in. Put me Australians? In. Hit me up. That's too many good Australian players. I'm not making so, it like that. <laughs> I um, think it's a really good system, especially with the prize pool as well. I know a lot of people... So the initial response, as always, is why isn't everything free? Give me everything for free, including everything free in the shop, and also have a million dollar prize pool. Um, so like the massive... The problem with that everybody was kind of picking apart was the fact that there, there is an entry fee or like there's a monthly fee that, you know, you pay for the month, $6, and then you play. And then, you know, if you don't get through, then fuck you. And then if you get through, maybe you win some prize money, which is kind of sick. Um, how else are they going to fund it? How else are they going to fund it without burning through uh, millions and millions of fucking dollars? Through pure altruism. Fund it through yeah. pure altruism. That's not happening, that's not happening buddy. I would like passion. charity passion. Passion. people play video games, please. Yeah. Please give it's, me free money. This didn't get mentioned, but the the the... Um, the price pool, I believe, is also bolstered by the entry fees as well. So the more, at least this is the way it was described to me, the more people who sign up, the bigger price pools will eventually be, maybe in the future. So yeah. 170k could just be a starting point. And yes, there's a qualification to EWC, but future seasons will have qualifiers into things as well. So those are Which unannounced. Cool so this isn't, this is like, this is me teasing a little bit because I got, um, you know, I, I, I spoke to an actual face it person who wanted me to like help promote this. I believe they spoke to a bunch of people. So um this the first season you go to EWC and the future seasons you might qualify to something different. Which is very cool. So every season you actually get to go to something. Yeah. And if which you're, if you're good enough and Which is that's up. huge for the pro teams, but I feel like what makes this really different than most other competitions is that there's genuinely like it's not just about finding out who's the number one. There's also these like lower leagues where you can play with your team of like brands or people at, at at any level right and like have a place for the competitive experience you know where where you get to play matches and you get to play against other teams of a similar level and compete i feel like that's like more important i mean i mean in a way like obviously the pro scene is really important but i think for fans it's like this is a way for you to actually play and and not get stumped by ends in the first round because ends will be in the yes. master division like right 
and you can be an open and you can just play other that's, open teams. And it's better than open div because open div was like fully open to everything, whereas this actually has skill divisions. Skill divisions are so important for players. If you're on the come up, you need skill divisions because it sorts you into better games against similarly skilled opponents so that you can actually have quality games and eventually work your way up to master. Um, the other thing that's important for context is this Face It League is based on the ESEA League that they've run for Counter-Strike for like, I don't know, like now? 15 I, I, so 15, 15 years, 15 years I, something like ESEA yeah. Counter-Strike. Exactly. They, right. They've run it successfully in Counter-Strike with a payment subscription model the entire way through. So, so it's proven as a model that it works with, with a subscription. I just hope the Overwatch audience sort of sees that and, and can latch on and say, okay, maybe this is worth the fee. Um, I actually don't know. Is it, is it actually six dollars? I don't know how much it is, but it's yeah, six I think bucks. It was... Yeah, six USD, which, like, which per month is like very cheap. When you think about like playing in a casual league, if you wanted to play casual basketball that wasn't just pick up at the, at the fucking local court, and you wanted something a little yeah. bit more organized, you're probably paying some sort of fee to a club, or like some Dude, baseball, yeah, whatever. I to mean, play, I'm right? I'm part of freaking like tennis clubs, and it's like per month. It's absurd. Yeah, like so gym membership. I, I mean, it's, it is a yeah, intro price. It is on the website. It's an intro price. It's a dollar off per month. So it's like normally six ninety nine, but it's actually five ninety nine. Special launch price billed annually, not including taxes. Obviously, that's with every fucking American state. Obviously, your taxes are different. So that's yeah, like what seventy two bucks for a year. Sure. I, I mean, if I you do you don't have to sub for a year, right? You just sub for the tournaments you want to play. In. Well, yeah, yeah, for the special it says deal, yeah. Build but... annually. I guess oh, that's okay, just okay. for the. I you guess that's the, for the you can get the monthly price. regularly, seven dollars a month. Yeah, I guess that's anyway, for the intro price yeah. if you build it for annually. I think the biggest still, thing is just is is the the question I guess for face it in Overwatch versus CS is that CS is like plagued by cheaters. Like mm -hmm. cheating is not that bad in Overwatch in the sense it's relatively rare from my perspective compared to most multiplayer games. But yeah. like you play Counter Strike, I mean, you go matchmaking. If you are like, let's say the top twenty five percent of the game, there's like a cheater every single game, right? Maybe they're not like spin botting, but like it's so prevalent. Like somebody is wall hacking in your pub games. Like it's it's actually crazy how prevalent it is. If you're remotely high skill at all in, in Counter Strike, how many people are cheating in in matchmaking? Um, and so Face It has like a much better anti cheat that is part of why people pay for face it in the SCA. It's not, I mean, there are still people who can manage to cheat, but it's just much more rare. It catches like more, many more cheats than, than valve does at least in CS. And so there's like people really do not want to play matchmaking in, in CS because of this reason. And so there's a huge marketplace for this. And the question I guess for overwatch is, is there going to be that same draw to have like the face it league? Um, if there's not as many, um, like, like, or like, right, like you can also play ranked and there's not, you're not like cheaters every single game. Um, I think it's still worth it. I think it's more, and, that, and for the leagues, it's more about the competition, right? It's more about the organized environment. You can play, there's like a prize, you play the season, you know, you improve with your team throughout the course of it. It's about that process. I think that's what's like worth the money um, and all the admining and stuff. I am I curious of the numbers. I, I agree. I'm curious of how many people actually sign up and pay um, obviously the sister, the fee and whatnot, because inherently Counter Strike is a very competitive game. Overwatch, the casual player base, significantly outweighs the competitive player base. Obviously, they've had this system before in Counter Strike, so the cost to run this kind of thing, I'm curious if it's like if it's kind of lower because uh, they've run this whole thing for so long in uh, in CS. But then Overwatch is like having almost a resurgence with the free-to-play model as well. There's definitely going to be a lot more players that are going to be trying this thing. Like if we launched this when it was like Overwatch 1, like, dude, I just don't up. see... Yeah, I just don't see people playing that, especially during the latter half of Overwatch, uh, Overwatch 1. Like, n there wasn't... Like, the player base just wasn't really there, but now we are free-to-play. Like, that... Tr like, the trickle-down economics of like, all oh, the free-to-play players, and then like, oh, and then these play ranked. And then these play face it like there's so many more players to kind of pull from now. So I don't know the numbers, but I'm like cautiously optimistic of how this thing's going to do, especially with a prize pool like this. And also teams streaming their scrims and like all these small things that are contributing to more people getting involved in esports as well. Like there's there's been so many new people. I spoke to Astro about this the other day, but like the amount of people that come into his stream, it's kind of funny. I think I mentioned this on Pat Chat before, but it's like, why isn't he talking? Why? Why is uh you know why is the stream? Why is it a delay? Why is all this? And it's like first time chatters and but shit. He but like, stopped streaming and then, scrims, right? Because he got fed up with it. Oh, did he? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, but like, the, uh, my my point is that there is a lot of people like 
either looking for this content or like finding it and being like, oh, they're like scrimming. What's a scrim? Like, oh, there's a tournament, like and all this shit. So like the amount of people that we have to play, uh, to kind of pick from and kind of funnel into this kind of system, I think there's a lot more now. And I think that people kind of forget how much of a resurgence I've watched has kind of had in a watch too. So yeah, the the paywall is there and it does kind of suck for people that don't really want to play, but also want to play tournaments. But it's it's the price of the platform. If you want something that's run very, very well, like face it, then, you know, that's the price like, you're going to pay. Someone's going to pay the admins. Someone's exactly. Gonna Someone's going to... But remember, esports is, esports is free to run and broadcasts are free to run. We don't get paid anything. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we, we don't, don't take any money. Yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah, the, things have to... I don't, I don't have to pay rent or buy food. Exactly. Uh, yeah. The money actually, has to come from somewhere. I don't somewhere. exist outside of this little window. Check, just right. Say, you you outside of this little window. You said, you but like, said it's I'm an AI. Right? I'm an AI companion generated <laughs> to create Overwatch content. And, it, and it's not a big cost. If this was more, if it was more like, like 10 bucks a month, you're sitting like, oh, okay, maybe, you know, maybe that's a bit too much for me. But, you know, six, seven dollars a month, like playing in a couple of tournaments with some friends, like, that's worth it. Like, 100%. If you can get a consistent group of friends that are you're all like diamond or plat or whatever. And you're not open. You're not fucking playing in the Masters League. You're playing against fairer competition, which is is all round good. And I, yeah, this, and at that this level, face it league is going to matter so much more than like the individual rank. Yeah. Like, uh, like if you're relatively close. I mean, when you have like sure. an enormous skill difference, okay, that's going to be too hard. But if you're relatively close to players around you, it's going to be way more about which team has a better strategy. It's going to be who's fun. Better, who's like, that's the thing. So it's going to be very fun playing in those environments because yeah. you're not facing Ents in round one. You're not facing Twisted Minds in round one or like, you know, Toronto to find or whatever, right? And, and it's, it's not the ranked environment of like chaos and like everything. Yeah, exactly. There's no. Themselves. You guys play as a team, you know, you can decide yeah. what your strat is. Together. You're in a lobby and that feels cool as like a casual player, I bet too. Like being in a lobby, being in an official tournament. I know when I played my first tournament in TF2 and like, uh, in, in, no, not even TF2, in like Halo 3, like it was in COD 4. I was like, man, this feels kind of neat. Like jumping into a lobby, it's all set up for you, and then you kind of go in. Or it it wasn't set up for you back in the day, but like you know, bear with me. You know, like jumping in and playing like an official game. It, the environment, like you said, is just way fucking different, and it yeah, feels good. You're not hard. facing yeah. like a four stack and then one solo. You're facing a five stack that is here to play in the tournament, just like you, and you get to win prize money. So like I have, I, I'm cautiously optimistic about the like the numbers in terms of players, but like as a system as a whole. I think it's fucking sick. And it being community, back, like the prize pool is really awesome. And then also the monthly payment also going towards a little bit of the prize pool as well. I think it's fucking sick. If the developers end up doing some like, maybe some skins or like something more integration, like they're not opposed to any of that either. So yeah, it's it's really cool. Uh, I, I fucking love it. And I'm glad we're actually having something like this. This is what Overwatch has been missing from like fucking day one. Like, yeah, it's cool. I'm glad OC okay. gets something to play in. And also, also, South yeah. America. also, yeah, actually, that's a really good that's fucking point. Right Holy shit. I, I've, I've been talking about this, uh, especially with I Japan. I always forget about OC. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, oh my honestly. God. <laughs> who remembers OCE Overwatch? Like, and like Japanese, okay, apart from a I, I okay. remember OCE over. They're, they're in the NA ranked, you know, I respect Yeah, I they are. Also, okay, the NA ranked also. players, you know, they're, but they're fucking sick. I love playing with the OCE boys. It's always really nice here in an Australian or a Kiwi or something in the lobby. You know, it always feels really good. Um, But... Japanese Overwatch, Australian Overwatch, South American Overwatch that was supported in contenders like in 2018, 2019. That just instantly like poof, poof, pee pee poofed, they're gone. Like having support, even if it's not like a broadcasted support, like every single week we're going to have like these matches broadcasted is a really good thing for the ecosystem as a whole. And like, thank fuck it's back. Holy shit. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fucking win. awesome. Let's it's a huge win for these smaller regions here. that have just been ignored basically from the get-go from uh when overwatch league kind of pushed in and contenders kind of fell back uh on the back foot no <laughs> <laughs> they're so bad Connor prince i forgot he existed he's coming to la i've, 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 I've forgotten about the last i go my go that's my cannibal avril do you have any final thoughts on oc yeah it is, um well, I, don't, I don't know that if this is like a perfect solution to the lack of Australia being a real region, OC being a real region, OWCS, but this is no, a you start. want both, right? Um, yeah, ideally you want both. I mean, yes, for sure. I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get a, a better idea of why OC was left out in the first place, and I think it just ended up being budgetary reasons, which is very frustrating. But um, yeah, at least there's this, which is this is going to be hopefully very good, and 
I, I actually really hope that South America gets to pick up as well. I think the first season, qualifying at EWC, is a monumental enough prize that it should invigorate people to sign up, and, and especially the people that still actually want to compete. If you're in, like, South America and you're like, dude, we could be the best team here and just get a ticket to, to, to you know, EWC and get a huge payout when we get there for the prize pool, right? I mean, that should hopefully get some good sign-ups in the region. Yeah, yeah. So. I feel like people will want to go to Esports World Cup. I mean, to be honest, guys, e Esports World Cup could probably be, maybe it almost certainly will be the biggest esports event of all time. Right, like Certainly is that the crazy? Money. Definitely the biggest money. There. It's like, well, like for to have, because I don't think we've ever had something like this where it's like all the major esports all together, one giant event over the course of like a month or something more than a month. I don't even know exactly. It's a bajillion dollars on the line. Exactly, exactly. It, 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 the scope is like really crazy. Is so the price pool actually announced? No, but it's I don't, I don't it's know, rumored to be yeah. huge. It's rumored, rumored to be, to be one bajillion plus figures. <laughs> So <laughs> what, like, what figure would you be disappointed with? What figure would you be like, oh, that's lower than I thought it would be? I would say, Only, like, I want to see whole prize pool more than 50 mil. That'd probably be... For like all the, the games? entire event? Yeah. I or would maybe, say... I, mean, I wouldn't be disappointed by that, but that's like, I'm just like, I literally have no idea, but I'm just guessing. Somewhere close to 100 million. Let me say this. If, Overwatch, if Overwatch's prize pool on its own is less than 2 million, I'm disappointed. I, oh, yeah. I think it'll, yeah, I think it'll probably be over 2 million. I'll adjust for Overwatch alone. Agree. 2021 TI was 40 million. Oof. That was with the yeah. comp compendium, Dude, right? honestly, oh. wait, what was Gamers 8 last year? The Gamers wait. 8 Dota. What was just Gamers 8 Dota? I remember that was so much. It was not Gamers so 8 Dota. Riyadh Monsters? Masters? 45 million for just Dota 2 Gamers 8. Last year. Wait, really? Uh, dude, it's it's going to be, it's, it might be like 200 million. mil for the whole event. 200, yeah. 300 mil for the whole event. Nine Realistic. figures, guys. Nine figures is probably what it's going to be. For all the games, yeah. I mean, Fine, I, yeah. I think they announced that League of Legends is going to be there too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, of course, we'll a lot of people were like, split. oh, they didn't think Riot would, like, be, be part of that, but... Yeah, they are going to be. Every, you, I mean, come on. But, every but then, you, but then you remember who Riot are owned by, and it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm kidding. All right. We're, are we moving on? <laughs> I'm moving on for the face league. Any 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 last oh. comments? I do hope that South America and Oceania pops off. Um, yeah. As, as sort of like just like a motivation to you know if 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 that's right about the budget reasons, just to like find some extra money to get those regions going in OWCS. Because I think that is, you know everyone knows this as well. That is like the true path to kind of like revitalize Overwatch esports. Yep. Is that if you kind of go like the Valorant route and you activate all these different regions across the the world and you're really tr able to engage with all these fan bases, right? And they have six fan bases in the Oceanic region and South America. So want to get that going. Um, all right. Do you guys want to move on to some gameplay stuff, some Overwatch Two stuff? Let's Always. go. Always. Venture. Venture test weekend this so this past fun. week, uh, people loved it. Uh, a lot they of content so creators good. really actually... happy uh, with with this hero, uh, the, the design of it. I've seen a lot of people being a bit confused about the role of Venture, but it doesn't really matter because the hero is just so much fun. EPS, yeah, yeah. Well, sure, no, sure, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what comps are you gonna play with Venture? We can get to that later. But I just want to hear first impressions first. I'm gonna go to you, Joss. I'm gonna go to you, Joss. Did you get the chance to play the Venture? And uh, what do you think of uh, playing Venture? I didn't play. Oh I my god, Jake! I, no, I didn't play him. I'm sorry. I played. I what played the them in fucking frick, uh, the uh, what it was it called? The fucking training range. Uh, okay. oh, I always like waiting until the hero comes Do out. You, you saw the basic. All right. All right. So the hero. You retain. You retain. Very until very fun. I think. Release. I think this is potentially, potentially the first time we've ever had a hero besides tracer that can fill the tracer role. Which probably means Ooh, the tracer we will, role. Which Hold probably on. means we will play tracer and this hero because that's oh. the best role. Is the tracer role? If you could play two tracers, you would, wow. and you just can't. And this is the only hero that is like remotely similar to tracer in its capacity to hold like space by itself with minimal resources. That is so rare in Overwatch. Literally, there are no other heroes besides tracer that do this. At high level. So I'm only talking about high level. At low level, fuck it. You and me on Sombra on the flank. You probably hold that shit down. You're probably <laughs> 1v3, you know? Like, fuck it. But but realistically, at high level, only Tracer can do what, what she can do, which is to, like, hold the objective solo, to pressure angles solo that are, like, exposed and can't be saved. You know, only Tracer can do these things. Um, Sombra can do it for, like, 0.1 seconds, and then you run away. Um, but, but Venture can actually hold these, like, aggressive off angles, can play super aggressive, and still escape and live without always being saved by teammates like most hit scan heroes have to be 
Um, and most other girls, period, most other DPS have to be saved by supports or playing around tanks. So it has like the most space creation next to Tracer on, on any DPS, which I think is super interesting and exciting. I don't know in the end, in the end, maybe the hit scan is just too good. You just play a hit scan Tracer and it's very vulnerable. Is adventure, adventure way more punishable to, to than Tracer? Yeah, like, I feel like stuns and CC do punish you, like Cassidy Nade and stuff. But honestly, it's only CC that I felt was like actually punishing you. Like it's so rare to die in the animation of digging in like really? to get actually full bursted i mean if you're like have any idea how to play like then okay maybe i just don't know how to play you shouldn't yeah. die no, to I regular see, damage I see like people, that i, I see I, when i watch content creators play this hero everyone's like oh i'm just dying during the dig yeah like the dig no animation is too long i'm just dying people just um, literally have no concept of and also like you 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 don't have three blinks i mean you have the one drill dash which is great it's got a lot of range but like three blinks is i think really insane right because it's like three of the same ability that you could use uh, Venture doesn't seem to have that many escapes to really be as survivable as Tracer. So, like, I don't. Yeah, but you have saying, you, get, but... you get HP off both of the skills. You can, I guess, the yeah. the dig keeps you underground for almost for five seconds if you use it properly. You like delay the exit by charging at the end. You 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 can stay underground for so long. I do think I don't think this hero is like at Tracer's level. But it does a lot more damage than Tracer. Like, a lot more damage than Tracer. It's not, it's, you know... So, obviously, like, there's a there's a penalty a Harder to, to aim than Tracer, I think. Yeah, so I'm only thinking about high-level players. Like, I don't... Where everyone's going to hit every shot, realistically, on this hero. Like, no one's going to... People aren't going to miss that much. Even um, at a high level, I think you're going to hit way more shots than Tracer compared to the left clicks on Venture. Just consistency-wise, uh, right? Maybe. I don't know. It's pretty close range. So, like, since you only fight close range, it's not that hard to suppose. hit. suppose. And then, for me, like, the the... The really, the the really strong aspects of the kit is just how much mobility you have. You have double mobility skill, two things that save you. They all give you shields. The ult gives you more shields. Um, it's just very very powerful to have all this flexibility because what you can do, you can like defend. If, you can stall the car for five seconds uncontestable with dig. I mean that's if you cycle. If you're again like in a rank, like okay whatever, you get off the car and then it's over and no one's touching. But like in a pro game, people are gonna be like. Tracer stalling car for blinks for three seconds, four seconds. Venture stalls car with dig for five seconds. Tank stalls car for five seconds. Like, pretty soon you cannot cap. Like, we are cycling every CD perfectly. You have to kill us. And you can't, like, cap with brute force. So, I mean, like, I think this hero could be could be really, really strong. I thought, like, I thought my, my gut reaction, you know, we barely made the time here, but I thought it'd be, like, almost like a Reaper replacement. And you yeah, kind of, like, Death Brawl, especially with the combos. Yeah. Um, the melee the does AOE 70 damage. Splash as well. I like, will say that Zarya yeah. is like the nastiest combo for this hero. You really want a Zarya, I will say. The ult, no. the ultimate is pretty good too. So the ult is kind of dog shit actually, but you know that's okay. Oh, you okay? All right. Well, the oh. ult gives you shield, which is nice, but it's super easy for like high mobility heroes to dodge the ult. It basically doesn't yeah. work. And if you have speed as well, you could probably get out of the way. It, you you have to hit them, or just like go on any high ground of any kind. <laughs> you can't. Right. And also yeah. like. Yeah, you I mean, to, like, sure, we might not see it on the Hollywood like, like, that good, but I do think there are moments where, like, the damage is quite significant. I think when you really optimize this hero, you can be so aggressive, make so much space, and still live. That is an insanely, like, that's the most valuable thing you can have at the high level, where right. you can put aggressive pressure on the enemy. Like, because what you do is you dig, every time you dig, you, like, go shark up to the enemy team. They all back up. If they don't all back up and they split, you dig up behind them and drill somebody in and they're dead. So they all back up from your invuln skill where you can't be punished. You have five seconds of making the whole team back up from one skill button. This is, you don't understand, this is, like, ridiculous. Like, you can't, if you can't hold aggressively because they press this one skill and go behind you, and then there's no punish because you just, or they just dig out and fly and, and run away. Or they just, like, turn around and come back. So you're constantly pressuring the objective. I mean, so again, low level play where people like just don't touch the car and they just fight each other. This hero's like, fine, it's whatever. You know, like every other hero in Overwatch, you play whatever you want at low level. But for high level play, when you're going to be like always, always, it's all about the objective. It's all about who can pressure the objective with priority. If you can do that, you get to play so defensively as a team, like you have this huge advantage. But um, by the way, you can dig inside the Life River platform and then if they pick it up, you're still in it. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, you that's jump out of the silly. top of the platform. If it, <laughs> you can't. You don't pick it up by standing on it or digging on it. Right. They and pick it up if they lift it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you come out and kill them on top of it. Oh, that's um, kind of. Kind but of but, neat. but just it's insane how well this hero can zone you and not be punished, and which is that's like only Tracer can do that, which is to say to be right up next to you because like even Reaper, yeah, Reaper can do that, but he needs like three heroes next to him enabling him, or he's useless. You know. Yeah. 
Uh, and Venture is not stuff. like that. Venture is you would uh, having like a Zarya bubble, you could do a lot more, but right. it's not like Reaper, you know, unplayable without these like Lucio Zarya heroes. The mobility does seem a little absurd. Yeah, yeah. Um, because if you if you drill dragon. dash underground, it's only half cooldown. Yeah, um, yeah. You can almost and then get two. You off, come right? out it's, of the it's thing like, and you have another one. Yeah, it's like so you can almost get two of the dashes underground, which is you, ridiculous. Yeah, you can. Well, not two underground, but you can get one and then get one and then insert. You can like almost insert it you, as you pop, come out. You'll yeah. have another instant. Yeah, right, right. If you use it early, and then the it's, other thing that you can you can dash if you're on a high ground or like any kind of elevated ground, and mm -hmm. you dash while digging. I mean. You dash out of the high ground, it hits right. for full damage, and it has. A oh short wow! That's relatively hard to set up. Um, but... so you, can you repeat that again? Sorry, what are you doing? So if you're in an elevated surface, like let's say where well, well, the venture was in that video, like you're on any kind of elevated ground where there's like a corner, right? So you're on the yeah. you're on the top of the cliff, and you mm -hmm. dig on the top of the cliff, and then you dash out of the side of the cliff, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That yeah. will hit for full damage. If someone is standing. Wait, if they were the next to you. The well, like, you got to hit them with it, of course. But, like, it will hit for full damage and have the reduced CD. So you could technically you get about, two full damage. Are you talking about a person on the ground? You're talking about a person on the lower elevation who you hit on the way down? Or yeah. Someone yeah, on... yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so as so as you... as You, you dash, dash out, out of the, the side ground, of the wall. And you can and do as... this on, like, the car. You can do this on, like, any small box. You can do this. And so I think the hero is just has so much optimization potential. Like, even my first impression is just like, oh, like, I can get away with so much on this hero. Which means, mm. yeah, sure, like when the enemy goes Cassidy, Sombra, Roadhog, they're going to punish the hell out of you and you won't be able to play. But like yeah. that's not ever going to happen in high level because those comps are just dog shit. You just lose the Sojourn, you know, like you can't switch three heroes to counter one hero. That is not viable, you know, at this level. Um, and so, yes, low level, yeah, this hero is going to be hard countered by, by stuns and control. Um, you're gonna need like the right enabling stuff. I but I think this hero will do so much for pressuring objectives is going to be really strong. I will say I'm not a particularly big fan of invulnerability abilities in general, but especially on DPSs. Like, I just think, like, these kind of designs, the more invulnerabilities we get in the game, especially given the fact that you can still stall payload and still stall objectives while invulnerable, it's just, like, it's not healthy for the game, in my opinion. It just kind of slows everything down, delays everything down. I think there are more interesting ways to pressure positioning, like, I don't mind Trace's design in that way because despite her insane mobility, it probably still feels a bit more fair to play against and like a straight up invulnerability, vulnerability, where it's just like, okay, well, like you said, Jake, venture digs and then what? No you can punish. Stall the car, un it's like you, you can't do anything about this venture digging. Whereas at least a Trace, it's like if you're good enough, maybe you hit the shot right. I mean, you can force the blinks pretty easy on Tracer, right? If she's on the point, she's that she's like trying to strafe this... around the point. Like you can force Tracer pretty easy if everybody just looks at her right with venture it's like you just can't <laughs> yeah there's nothing to, to or yeah, it's, it's like just, may it's or something but the ground. thing about venture is unique from may is that like you can like actually get there you, you don't can, have to like and run you can in. move you yeah, can yeah, fucking you move you're not so, just like stuck in a block and then as soon as you defrost everybody's I do think, looking though, it's inevitable way. that like all of the heroes that are very strong by virtue of having extremely good mobility are not good for average players um like yeah, like, yeah. this is how it is because the mobility skill is like the most complex because you can do anything with it you could like go in you could go out and it's incredibly powerful having the 10 different options at any moment is incredibly powerful but if you don't make the right decision it's useless compared to like would you would rather just be soldier 76 if you're not gonna if your decisions aren't like that perfect and the game's not that high level just just you know build your heal station and shoot your gun at the enemy team you'll probably do more so venture i will say i doubt this hero will be like op for the casual player i think it's just going to be too this is the new echo. hard to execute it's going to be the bottom five <laughs> play echo. play just right next it's to it's like echo it's like echo cool because like i think, echo is also one I of think the, the hero is way more fun than echo so i think casual play because is really yeah fun, that is really, true really fun hero. and some some aspects of the hero are like much more attainable like echo is like a very aim skill heavy hero this hero has a lot more like positioning decision making to do echo is like you live because you two shot them not because you like you don't really i think i think the way you're, you're really looking like at that as well, well with your skills you just watch out them right i think the way you're looking at that as well jake is like oh people want to win and every like they want to rank up as fast as they possibly can the casual yeah. player base like people aren't doing that like this hero is probably going to be played a ton even if she's uh, even if they are very hard to like execute because they're just fun and they have cool abilities like like yeah, I, I, I just don't think it's same with, like echo is a little bit different i think because with echo 
getting the satisfaction of like shooting yeah. is a is a lot harder than like a hit scan mm. hero like soldier but with venture because they have like abilities that give you a lot of movement and then pretty i wouldn't say it's the easiest thing to hit in the world but like the aoe just left play like boom 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 like it's a lot harder it's a lot easier to hit than like sticky bombs from across the map so that serotonin like the hit markers your hit markers tweet from a long time ago and you but, could like, like drill dash on people for yeah easy you can drill dash you know? like the character is in essence a little bit more simple to execute than echo is Definitely. and it gives that yeah. more, like the serotonin is there and like people are people are looking to win obviously that's why you play 5v5 but if they are playing uh the venture and they're not doing nearly as well like it doesn't really matter because venture their kit is just it's just more I think, fun, I, I think and it's just more I, satisfying to like get off so i think given the the how easy it is to punish venture for like a bad player take it from me as a bad player where like my experience playing venture was like bro i'm just dying over and over and over like I, obviously <laughs> obviously i'm playing with teams that don't support me i don't have a zari bubbling me or anything i got nothing mm. no one helps me i come out of my dig i pop up and i dash and i just die because my team just doesn't do anything uh, here, here I go blaming the team, but you know that, that's the average play experience. Like that's like the middle rank experience. So in a way, I think you almost say that about get, any hero. Though people got to get no, but like not every hero is that close range. Like like Jake said, you can play soldier and just shoot sure. from the back line. You're not going to get punished unless you get flanked. You can just chill. Venture, you have to be close to do anything. Like poking from mid range, similar range to Sigma, if I'm not mistaken. It's but actually like, significantly shorter. Surprisingly, I thought it was similar because the gun is pretty similar in like a lot of ways. Okay, so, so even shorter than Sigma. Looks similar, but so it's, even yeah, shorter Sigma than Sigma, like almost which, twice which the means range. which means that's that's insane actually. So that yeah, it's means very you, have short be, range. you have to be very close to doing. It's anything. like if it feels you, like Reaper, man. Like I wouldn't you, really like in terms of effective exactly. range of Reaper. It's pretty similar. And I think it's a much harder, difficult to, a hero to play the Reaper, right? Just based on what you said, because the more mobility, the more the more difficult the hero is to play. So, Venture is a more difficult version of Reaper. And so I think a lot of like middle rank type of players are probably going to get punished a lot of this year. So I'll be very cur be very curious about the opinions of the the casual players is, uh, further down the line once the dust is settled. Is that hitbox the same as Reapers, where it's like kind of bigger than? It's a, a lot I mean, of they're a big yet. hero. Like in general, they're a big hero, but they do get the instant. Yeah. They get the guaranteed shields from abilities. It's not based right. on hitting the abilities like Doomfist. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's pressing just your skills. shooting or like skill. Yeah, skills, right? Like which is kind of insane. Yeah, so you get I do, potentially I do, I you cycle all your skills. You're getting 40 HP right. every skill, and then 75 from the old. I wouldn't like, call if you're it too cycling soon. that pretty well. It's a lot. Avril, to be honest with you, I wouldn't call it too soon. And like, uh, people are going to get punished when they play venture. Like, I think in general, uh, people don't really know how to punish people ever in like metal ranks and stuff. And it, 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 like, I think the punishment is so much easier. Than, <laughs> yeah, but you uh, fight, bro. I've seen you play Wreckable, bro. The, like, the, like, ain't no way. The punish like, is so much easier than the using the kit. Well, that's the the, sure. the, the challenge there because I think like. What you do to punish venture is play heroes with stuns or control and then wait for them to try to dig and then does like cast need them the nade or back? Them. Does what? cast need the flash nade back? No, you I mean the nade. Somebody? Sorry, the nade is very good at canceling the dig. The dig oh, lasts. You, can, you don't oh, want right, to be. Yeah, because you can. Yeah, you get hindered. Right. You get hindered. Yeah, your right. dig ends and you lose the CD and you're you're like almost assuredly dead if that happens. Like, or hog like, hooks you or like or Arisa stuns like you doom. or doom mini punches you. Doom, do, doom's yeah. punch. Yeah. Doom's mini punch is way faster than dig animation. Every yeah, time I try to mini punches like every one time MS I try to dig, just right click. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, 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 if the tank goes doom and I just can't live anymore because the punch you have to like let instantly. the doom punch you and then dig after because you have to yeah, know right. if you get your dig canceled you will be dead for sure. So you just if that happens you you already fucked up basically. You can't yeah. let that happen. You have to let him punch you. But then there's a meta game where he can't punch you unless you dig. So he actually needs to punch you and then you dig right away as soon as you get punched. Um, and then you probably live. But if you ever, like, I had the same experience. When I first started playing them, I was like, oh, man, like, I keep getting canceled by these things. And sometimes it still happened. But as I played more and more, it's just, like, my awareness about a lot of times I'm, like, digging to initiate was, like, my one like, the play style I settled on for the most part was I dig first, actually. I go in. I look for the opportunity to pop up. And then I'm either committing in for kills or I'm just backing out with drill dash. And I'm just cooldown cycling 24-7 like that. Like, the what makes us so strong is that you dig and you, like, go in. And while you're digging underground and you're like in, coming into the enemy team's formation, it's like if anybody stays, like imagine their tank stays in the front line and you go behind their tank when you're digging. You could just instantly pop up and drill your tank like five to six meters into your, your own team group up where they just insta-die. Or maybe not insta-die, but it, it's really dangerous potentially for the tank, for like a lot of tanks. You know, imagine on Winston, there's you potential to get pushed into the enemy team. You can't yeah, be there. You, you need to run. And so a lot of these low mobility tanks, or every tank, honestly, that I played against, other than like maybe Arista doesn't care, but like 
You don't want to get pushed off high ground or push into the enemy team. That's super scary for you. Normally, it's very hard to push people into your team, right? The only skills mm. that do that are like Hog and Junker Queen, right? Basically, or like Lucio could get behind you, but you know what I mean? That's, that's already kind of hard. Lucio is not often going to be, that he has to be good at Lucio to like manage to get behind you. Venture is like, I am permanently behind you over and over and over again, I'm behind you. And you have to decide like the back line has to run back because they're scared I'm going to go on them and just solo kill them because I can full burst a squishy in like one second if they're not getting help. Um, so like literally I can solo kill any squishy in the game that doesn't have their own stun to save them. Um, and if I use high ground volume, maybe I can do it even if I dodge the stun, you know? So I can kill the back line. I can kill the tank. I can do, I can kill like anybody in the map that I'm near and, and I'm immortal while I'm setting it up. You know, like th this, <laughs> this is really crazy. If you, if you, if you play well around it, you know, if you're like min maxing it, um, cause you, and then if you don't find anything, the enemy all backed up. So you couldn't dig on, you couldn't go on anybody. You just go out and do it over and over again. But that yeah. moment of them. They have to respect your and give you space, or they, I mean, at high level, they will have to respect and give you space. And then you're just getting free space where you're not being punished for that. Like you're slowly going to take the map piece by piece. And then eventually there's nowhere for them to back anymore. Right. And then they just all die to you. Um, or you, you, when your opening comes up, I feel like it's so much more reliable than like almost any other DPS in terms of how consistent it can be taking the space. No, I want to make a point on the hero design um, as well. I think their kit overall mentioned a second ago is also just fun yeah. i think looking back um at the heroes that they've released like in overwatch 2 um and you could easily see the kind of transition although you could say obviously with sojourn being released uh one of the first heroes released like sick sojourn as fuck also hero. one of the most fun heroes in the game <laughs> yeah but when they got to life weaver it was like oh this character to play is kind of well unless you're fucking rack i guess there are definitely some life weaver stands out there for sure but like that hero is kind of fucking boring like to actually play like it's not intuitive really like especially when it launched right you had to fucking fight the firing and switching and firing and healing and shit that was awful and um, but you look at venture and every part of the kit i think is like a fun ability to actually use even the ult right you, jake you're saying it's not very good right now like it's well, gonna be I just good think there's a bunch of weaknesses but like honestly so, it's it's I, fine it's totally it's not a bad it i don't give a shit about the fucking know. power level at all like this but is it's fine I'm if the enemies all group up you're like go go yeah, go yeah like, exactly it's them. just like <laughs> go 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 you know it's like fucking cool man like that and that's what the heroes because honestly low level be. people don't really and, go high grounds all that much you know people sure. stand in the middle and fight like, and so honestly it'll it's probably cool be really good <laughs> to fucking use and you don't put a goddamn fucking tree in a fucking you build a forest on the fo a fucking point like good thank god like their 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 kit is fucking sick and it's even really if fun. the ult is like kind of underpowered or maybe like the mobility is like op like you said like you push people into like oh i can one shot squishy like we'll sort that out we'll sort the balance out later like it doesn't mm -hmm. fucking matter we're a free to play fucking game the heroes have to be fucking fun the game modes have to be fucking fun maps have to be fun like the big win here i think for the character is that all the abilities look cool as shit and it is a mobility obviously in any game is going to be awesome and it's the funnest point to, for most games and also it creates a very high skill ceiling too with mobility um which is an added like benefit to that but like it's just a good and well-designed hero like if you find complaint uh, like complaints with the hero sure it might be like numbers and like oh this is too strong this is whatever but like you can't say the hero isn't just fun as fuck to watch yeah it's so much fun, fun as it's fuck so to to play too and when they hit comp not comp sorry like owcs holy shit like that is going to be it's going to be cool as fuck like when life we originally so, got like launched and stuff do oh we my know god, yet? I, if I want to shoot when it comes my out. fucking brains out if that guy actually played. Because it's just it's just not a fun hero to watch uh, at all. We don't know. It's just not... I, we have no idea. Season 10. It, it'd be I so no bullshit, but at the same time, I'm like, that'd be so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, yeah. I don't know. I, I do have some fears. Like, we talk about OWC, so I have fears. Hero, I, I have fears <laughs> where, like, the hero just ends up being, like, a, a stall character. Like, five-second yeah. dig, and, like, no one caps. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, it could be They'll probably end up changing quickly. the stall. And this is a more of a meta point as well. So. And I, you brought it up a little bit earlier on, Avil, um, about the invulnerabilities and stuff. We cannot get to a point in the game where like every single character has an invun, has like an untargetable, has like this, and like more supports get Suzu-like abilities and stuff. There is a real problem when that creep... Invulnerability you know, creep? Invulnerability creep and like you know immortality creep like well it's just, happening just i will chill. say adventure has like, a lot more counterplay than like any other involvement in the game because yep. of how long the animation is like you just play a stun and they can't dig near you i'm you know? not like, saying it's here now 
But I'm just saying, in general, yeah. in vulnerabilities I, I, as a whole, aren't that fun to play against. Everyone if says this. Everyone that. says, like, I hate Suzu and I hate Lamp. I swear this is, like, this is actually, like, one of the most... Not, no, no flame to you, Jack. It's, like, just a very yeah. common take in Overwatch, right? Everyone says it this. is, yeah. It's, I me, just it's my agree. take, Jake. It's my take. You can no, say my, my name. I hate my, Suzu. I hate Lamp. You hate, okay, Johnny. Johnny's take is a huge... I don't mind Suzu, I'll put it on Johnny. Either. Fuck Lamp. I think it's Worst funny because I genuinely <laughs> have... I have never once felt like these skills are, like bad or whatever or like bad for the game it's like fine you just like that's I what they do they have a issue on that but sure like, but like <laughs> it's like well why you just you have to force it and then and then they're vulnerable to it right i like, hate you know, lamp like, more than i hate suzu suzu what? it's just like a Point small is, thing in general i just don't think lamp. headphones are that bad it's okay. like it's just cooldown cooldowns no, 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 no. are strong if, if it's if it's, it's if, a if, fucking 20 okay, second okay. cooldown it's really bad lamp is not that good no 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 okay it's not about good or bad it's about fun the lamp is so boring it's like oh i'm gonna put this lamp around the corner and like no there's more than that you gotta have a plan have a plan to break the lamp Suzu, you should play adventure. Like, if you dig under the lamp, it hits the lamp. Oh, it hits the lamp. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't one shot it's, it. But it it's goes close. beyond. It goes beyond whether it's just fun or not. It goes beyond whether it's just one ability that has twenty second cooldown. It's about the invulnerability creep, where more and more heroes are getting yeah. some sort of invulnerability, and you're going to get to the point where, like, at what point do you have all five heroes on a team? Everyone has an invulnerability, and it just all cycles. So it's not just about oh, just force the cooldowns. Well, now there's fucking five of them. It's, does everybody have has an invuln? You have to force all the cooldowns. Like no one dies. No, it's but insane. that's not. I don't think it's really that bad because the reality is, if there's five heroes on the map, you can be shooting. Yeah, if they give all the invulns to one guy, then he'll be impossible to kill. But like, <laughs> no, 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 like the everyone... other guys have to be playing to do that, and they could die. You know. Okay, right now you have. You, if you played, okay, this sounds like a dog shit comp, but it's just for the point of the of the of the point. It's like you go venture, you go May, you go. Uh, you go BAP, you go carry, and then let's imagine a tank also has it involved. This is, I don't think a tank currently has it involved, but a tank that also somehow gets it involved is basically invulnerable. It's part of their own. Okay, Doom's <laughs> media strike becomes a basic no, 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 it's so basically, involved, but... so basically, you imagine that comp where everyone has some sort of involved. Every All the DPSs in the tank have their own involved, and the supports can give an involved. At that point, the thing is that the comp game is like not ridiculous. good. You will just lose every game. Yes. Like, okay, but you're okay. You're getting caught on the comp. But what I'm saying is like, listen. Okay, fine. Imagine this comp that is good that has five involves. How about now? Is I mean, the most no? the most similar comp to what you're describing, like the real meta comps that are similar describing, is like the Lucio Mario. But I'm Sombra. talking about a hypothetical. Yeah. I'm talking about a hypothetical world where like invulnerability creep gets so bad that new hero, let's twenty new heroes come out with like three years to five years down the line. Overwatch, Overwatch is still alive. Twenty new heroes, and now you can play a good comp of five heroes where everyone has it involved because they've invulnerability creep the fuck out of the game. Now what? I I just oh, my main point by the way is just, the they should just be careful. Like I yeah. I don't think there's a problem with the game right now with invulnerabilities and shit. I think it's fine the way we are right now. It's just yes, later down the line. Let's not fucking same. speculate this. If if realist, everyone yeah. can give them to each other. There's a problem, but like DPS and tanks yeah. having the ones they use for themselves is not that bad because it's like yeah well and you, you as, know like as long you can't as stack them to back, to back to back the real problem is stuff like goats where you're stacking everyone's yeah. defensive skills on top of one another over and over and no one everyone gets all the benefit like all players behind the rank sure. get the same benefit all players in the brig war get the same benefit that's like the multiplicative scaling that becomes and, really and that's why 6v6 doesn't work boom we got there eventually jay we got back oh, there although I don't there is a small about. counterpoint to that as well that's kind of it's kind of well it hasn't stopped zombie comps but like I, I would say zombie comps are more of a problem by watching them like near future. But like with the DPS passive, that's not really a thing anymore. Or like yeah, it's um, harder to be like a pure zombie comp. Like nothing is dying. The backline is not dying with BAP or like Arna fucking Brig, like that kind of thing. So as long as we're in a position in the game where the time to kill is low enough where you can just burst people, like we're fine. If we removed the DPS passive, this problem of like invulnerabilities would be a lot bigger of an issue. But because we've almost counteracted the point of like having invulnerabilities in the game by adding this DPS passive, I, I think we're going to be fine for a long time to come. It was I just so. more of a. I did not mean for this to get into a fucking twenty minute round about fucking invulnerabilities. That's in what the we game. do here. I right, don't right, think right, they're. Right, right, I don't give a that's shit. The I don't think we that serve. Johnny. Shut the fuck up. We talk way too long about <laughs> patch, <laughs> balance, state of the game. That's why people right, tune no in. More. No more. It's what's not next? a bad thing. What's next, Johnny? What's next? This is what it's, a bad thing. Did... it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing because you next, said Lamp Johnny? is fucking good. It's not. Guys, no, 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 Lamp is good. Lamp is good. I did just not on, Johnny, on. what's next, Move Johnny? Anyway, man, we have a window, Johnny. Did we talk about the Mercy Mythic at the start? Oh, no, we didn't.
Let's go. Mercy I mean, it's just one picture, and I think we're guessing Who that cares, it's a Mercy Mythic. Every character is going to get a Mythic. It was a voice chill. line in character it as well. Bro. Yeah, but this is like the fucking... This is like the is fucking... That even true? Nuclear it missile not the Omos team the has mythic. stored underground, that's waiting no for the way, perfect moment to bring out. This is the Mercy Mythic. It's one time only. They, Dude, and they've if, decided to un they're launching it on season 10 jake yeah it's a big if moment it's not a mercy mythic we are seeing a decline in the player base by about 50 percent because they have been baited they, it's a mercy mythic come on it, like, it Dude, who cares? No, why did you in the mythic shop thing where you can buy whatever mythic you want yeah but like they're still going to release a mythic Ex except that yeah. yeah you can yeah. buy the old mythics you can buy the yeah, old yeah, mythics yeah. not the new ones yeah. obviously yeah so if yeah. you're going to be like me and actually just stall out the purchase of this mythic skin you can so fire bro again you want it's really it's the best one ever made by the way so goaded actually it's still is the best one it's still is the best one i like the more the moira voices are sick the voice lines on moira when you're playing i've been playing a little moira it's I'm so fun, nice. I'm bro. I'm kind of nice on the name. Uh, I saw your tweet. Yeah, yeah. I saw your tweet. Dude, I'm yeah. just slay. I Represent. slay Moira. The, the, the Moira the Mythic might be the second best Mythic, actually. Just on this. I like Ooh, Eldritchy ah, horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff. Nice. I, gotta, I gotta shout out my Jungle Queen fans out there. Okay, the Jungle oh, Queen Jake lightning bolts cool, are fire. Like, the sound effects. Like, again, I like Eldritch horror kind of shit. But, like, the sound yeah, effects on the Moira so stuff cool. is fucking awesome. The orbs it's like, like actually next level. The yeah, the eyeballs. eyes that fucking minion. look around and shit, bro, come on. I haven't it's played so Moira. Cool. <laughs> You've, like, never you played what? the Battle Pass, No, like, with the skin, I haven't played Moira. Oh, oh. so I, I don't, I mean, yeah, it sounds, sounds good, guys. I, I queue tank, and then I put, play Orisa Ram, and I hope I get good damage towards my team. You guys are crazy. I played. I was playing tank today. I played... I played Doomfist, Junker Queen, Winston, Diva, Zarya, Ram, Sigma. Yeah, you can Arisa. play anything right now. Like, actually. it's yeah, all no, no, no. It's a me it's problem. I'm not saying it's a standard oh, okay. game You're problem. A it's a me oh, problem, okay. Jake. Don't, don't, don't go into the tank conversation. No, no, no. It's it's more so like uh, after a long day, I, I want to wind down, kill some ranked, and I'm just like, play some ranked. What, what, no. what hero can I play you where wind I wind down by queuing ranked? That's psychopathic. I behavior. wind down by playing yeah, Rota too, Jack. So oh, it doesn't wind down. Some of us have Yeah, but that's not your main work. game. Is what I, like I play Battlefield or like I'll play another ranked mode. In, those like, games Halo are chill. Those games are chill. Yeah, they're fucking. Bro, I play Overwatch. Have my heart rate up. That's my exercise of the day. No, oh, that's <laughs> now that is good. Now if we could just get Overwatch classified as exercise in the schools, we'd really be. Oh really my god, we're whole breaking this thing. system, baby. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Pizza is a vegetable. Overwatch is exercise, guys. There we hey, go. That's what Planet Fitness say, bro. Right? They got pizza every fucking Friday. Was it last Friday of every month or some shit like that? They got pizza day. Why did they do that? Wait, really? Gym? Why did they give us? I don't want pizza. You don't know that? It's like a. It's like a meme. It's like the fucking. You're going to the gym to eat fucking pizza. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's funny. ridiculous. I think. I think they have the, the what is it called? The judgment free zone at the uh, Fitness Twenty Four. I need a judgment. Oh, we're not in it, Johnny. So we can fucking. We can judge the pizza. Is there, is there, is there, is there a the maximum judge judgment? Is there a maximum <laughs> judgment zone where all you do is judge? Is that a zone as well? Because like, yeah, it's on the other side of the hall, bro. It's on like level two or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They always have the lunk alarm too, which is kind of funny. All right. Uh, I know this is old news, but uh, I wanted to jump into uh, a Bloomberg article that came out a couple of weeks ago, uh, not to discuss it in depth or anything yeah, like that, that, but it's more so more so just Doors walks away. <laughs> giving a shout out to the Overwatch developers because there was some really shitty information in this uh, Bloomberg article uh, where uh, it was covered that uh, the developers would not receive a bonus uh, for working on the game. Uh, in the previous year, uh, which I, I I can't, it's just so unbelievably shitty, uh, you know, because, um, you know, in the games industry, especially, you know, developers, they work hard on these games to make them successful, and they usually get a reward with a bonus. In this article, uh, it was covered that there was a new policy in place at Blizzard, which meant that depending on which game you worked on, you deserve, received more bonus depending on how successful your game was. Uh, and apparently this was like a policy decision internally that was much discussed pre prior to this being put in place. An argument uh, from the old people in charge at Blizzard was that that's actually bad because internally you'd want all the employees to work on the more popular games because then you'd get a bigger bonus. Uh, whereas, you know, the culture of Blizzard should instead be that you get a share of the company bonus, which justifies working even on smaller games uh, because you're like growing the culture together as a company. But they made this policy change, which meant that uh, each game separately received bonus depending on how good their game do uh, did uh, last year. I don't know. Did anyone write uh, read this article? Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong here. I, I, that sounds right. 
I, I, but, I read it. But, I read that. Yeah, I had the same conclusion you did. The, yeah. Originally, the bonuses were distributed company wide, so it doesn't matter what game you're on. If Blizzard overall is successful, everybody gets the same level mm -hmm. of bonus relative to what their their package is. But now it's game by game. So Overwatch obviously probably did not have particularly good months or quarters or years. I don't know how they did divvy it up because of you know they canceled. They had all this spent yeah. all this dev time on PVE, and now they're switching to PVP. And so of course, right now it looks bad. Like oh yeah, we didn't meet our goals or whatever. Yeah. But I also feel like I don't know. Is that that should just be should have been really obvious to like anybody who's paying attention that like when you just cancel like a, ma a massive amount of content and you decide to pivot to focusing on something else. Yeah, sure, your output sure. does not is zero right now, I, right? Because you just read made this huge change. Paragraphs. If Solomon, you can pull it up on stream as well. Uh, you can pull it up. So if you scroll down, uh, it starts in oh, August 2023. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Just 149 dollars uh -oh. uh -oh. a year. Pounds. Do you know what? Great British yeah. pounds. Face it, baby. It face starts it. in August 2023. Just play face it. Don't read the news, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's better. Keeps he's scrolling it on. It says uh, in August 2023. Uh, Overwatch 2 team members were told that based on the game's poor financial performance in the first half of the year, they shouldn't have received anything, according to people familiar with what happened, who has not to be named, discussing non public information, but that the company would cover some of their bonuses to make up for the shortfall. Then, earlier this month, the company informed developers that they would receive a stunning 0% of their bonus targets. Failing to get any profit sharing bonus is rare at Blizzard and is the result of a major policy change that was enacted in 2023. And then, what I said that, you know, they made this policy change. But I just, I just, this is so shitty for the employees. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of industries out there where bonuses, uh, performance bonuses, profit bonuses are, you know, a, a pretty significant chunk of, you know, what people make or like, you know, a pretty big deal. It's not only in games. It's not only at Blizzard. This is, you know, if you work in finance or I don't know, like whatever. And so I, I just know, I, I feel like the game is going in such a great direction. I feel like there's so many great things being put into place. Obviously the whole PVE thing, you know, we can talk about that <clears> or whatever, but this is mostly just me ranting I about how shitty this is for the employees of the yeah. developer team how shit is like i i really feel for those people because i really do feel like the game is in the best states it's been a long time because especially pvp you know um mm. and so yeah I, I i just i just feel for the people who work so freaking hard at this game every single day and i i, I wish this wasn't the case so i i, I feel add, i feel really bad for them i'll add a little bit of extra context i think it should be said that um it's it's my, the situation is particularly bad because supposedly, I don't know if they wrote this in the article or not, but this is part of the overall Jason Schreier verse of rumors and leaks that supposedly at Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, the devs are paid less than other studios. I don't know if they're paid less than industry standards, so I won't say that, but they're paid less than other studios. Like, for example, I think Riot got brought up, they definitely get paid less than Riot. So that's why the bonus is more valuable to the devs because supposedly they're already being underpaid. So the bonus is important at that I mean, stage. I heard, is my understanding that basically in general, the game industry is like underpaid in a way because like if you have the same CS skills and you're willing to go like make enterprise applications, you're probably going to make more money. You're going to go like make a, is, a database software for Amazon is probably going to pay a lot more. I was because, like, go ahead. day one, lesson one, when I was doing my games to, uh, degree in university, you're going to get paid a lot less than people if you just go work at fucking IBM. Just go yeah. work at IBM. <laughs> they didn't because, actually because say that, but it was like people also just want to work in the it, games industry, so they're willing yeah, to make less money. It's a for the industry. same job because they because they like it, right? They care. Right, they want yeah. to make their their passion. They want to make this this. And I will art. say that's not always the case, and that was more of a them being funny. But that was yeah. what, it was one of the topics that's brought up in like one of our courses that we did in, in university was like it, the pay scale, like compared to a lot of other in, a lot of other like programming focused industries isn't necessarily what you think it would be but that's just how it is like also the deal where they were like oh yeah like uh, don't worry you under the, the financials underperformed but we'll make up for it and then months later be like actually sorry you're not getting yeah, anything yeah that is fucked actually if that's really if they like the fuck, made a man. false promise to them that's fucked yeah up. that's messed yeah. up real messed up um i, I also think the um there you go i th yeah. i think yeah, like um, driven by former, it says in the other, from my former CEO Bobby Kotick. So I believe it was actually maybe a potential Bobby call where instead of the profits, the the bonuses being shared across all the devs, no matter what game they worked on, it ended up being specific games, right? So uh, being tied to specific game rather. So there was that. Yeah, I don't know if any Overwatch developers listen to this podcast, but if you do, that fucking sucks, and I I feel for you. I can't give you money, but I can lend you. 
my, my I, in support. In fact, I would like some of your money. <laughs> <laughs> you would like some Give of my me money. Some of your money god damn it jake you're so greedy you're so greedy fucking <laughs> i'm just honest you guys are just honest all right all right all right yeah i'm setting my stack of cash over here. Is... um <laughs> uh anything else anything else we should discuss before we head out um anything is there any other news oh yeah we should discuss the fact that uh <laughs> Rush 8 and 9K have decided to start a Korean uncoachable. <laughs> so there's oh, a, I did see there's that, a, yeah. There's a Korean version of, uh, of, of the coach podcast. I was on uncoachable. I don't know if it's There were some yet, general notes. I, I someone someone wrote general notes on Reddit. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, they can, said that North America is really bad right now from Rush and 9K. He, Rush so. thinks North America fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks North America blows. Like, <laughs> I think Toronto Defiant is like the only team who could remotely do well, basically. But other than that, I'm so. hopeful for Toronto Defiant, but I don't really think anyone else can be competitive. So what else did they say? They said that um, um, FTG probably doesn't have a chance at winning Korea. Yeti has an outside shot, and obviously the favorites are Wack and Falcons with Wack being better. So that's pretty normal. I think we all agree with that. We all said that anyway. Uh, they talked about a little bit about the meta and the... The compositions which is pretty nitty gritty and then there was some really um, interesting discussion about play style it seems like different the way teams uh play differently um as in korea described by color like teams have different colors um so there's definitely some, oh, just some the skins, cool... yeah no the, literally the they, they call they, the play people, style the color, will oh, say the color has like your style yeah they say oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. Their FT, color yeah, is yeah like that's right ftg or... have ftg have violet on so they play like more of a shock style apparently something like that yeah, um, but this is super uh, interesting. So the so. funniest comment, the funniest comment I saw was this comment is like, "Here we go, Korean Uncoachables episode two. Americans ruined the Overwatch League. Just, <laughs> just like Americans the ruined the Overwatch League. The stuff just do, we can't cover on Flat Chat. We get just too, do too the <laughs> Um, I, I think 9k. <laughs> Oh my god! I got them to do this. I got them to do that. I was like, guys, everyone do a thumbnail. Everyone do a thumbnail. Oh my! God. Look at Chris. Chris just with his hands up. It makes spread. They joke about flats, right? They joke about flats thumbnail thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love flats thumbnails. By the way, they're so fucking good. They're funny. Um, they also said on the. I, I mean, again, I'm taking this from a freaking Reddit post. Uh, but uh, 9k also said that you can make a case that you should rename Ajax to a Violet. Uh, which is he did get Ajax the punch. He got the Ajax problem is it can't be now, renamed. Like... Ajax is a C9 now. It's like it, it's never going back, bro. It's that's forever. That's funny. Like C9 fun, doesn't even have a team in Overwatch for the last like years, you know. Uh, he's joking about how fucking how bad Violet has been with losing beats, right? It's kind of no, no, no. A real, real, real good Lucio players will Ajax. It's a part of the game. You have to gamble so to true. beat sometimes. A no kappa, no kappa. Yep. You have to gamble so to true. beat. Maybe he's Ajaxing a little bit too much. But that's because he's he's pushing the limit, you know? He's pushing the limit of, of what's he's possible. He's limit testing. He's limit testing. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, I guess that was it. Uh, we won't be diving into any five versus five versus six versus six conversations. Thank God. Uh, yeah. on, on, on oh, oh, you're over it, Jake. You're over it, yeah. Jake. You're done with it. No, I mean, I'm glad I did the debate. I did a debate with Iron. If it was yeah, you did. Know. I'm glad I did it because it made me, it helped me understand like different people's perspective and sort of where they're coming at it from. And then like, there's like, there's value in that. I think always. So I don't, I have no regrets doing it, but I will say, I feel like I've kind of come to my own. I kind of under, I, I honestly just like, didn't fully understand why people were arguing so hard for 66. And I think, I think people are just sort of like, did they change your mind? I, I have, have a tenuous relationship with the facts who, who want to bring back. A That's tenuous a relationship nice with facts. People that, who think about wow. things for they, six. I'll, I'll explain it like this. They, wow. they think, they think in a very idealistic way. And that it's which is not attached to the reality of like how, how the game like actually works. I mean, it's, uh, it's getting enough. to that point. I, I, it's getting I, to I, that I, point. I, anyway, but that's I agree with Jake. Obviously, I agree with Jake. Like, like yeah, they think in a very fantastical, idealistic way, which is not realistic. <laughs> you didn't hear it, it before the start of the podcast. Jake called them all losers. So yeah. There you go. That's how you end it. Anyway, that. that's not true. see you next week. I don't week. think he actually did that, Joel. I don't think he actually did that. Oh, no it's way. me when I spread no misinformation way. on the internet. It's just, it's just there's not enough tank players. The, yeah, I, the, the very players. idealistic thing is, oh, if we, if, we, if we do 6v6 perfect and the tank balance is great, the tank players will come back. And I just they don't think that. I think that is copium. <laughs> come like, back. Where are they? Where are exactly. the tank I just players? Think, I think, honestly, it's just, it's just like, no way. Yeah, like, I don't know. There's no game ever have there been... 
have there been like as many tank players as the other roles? It's just the tank is like a conceptually challenging role, and the other roles are just not conceptually challenging, right? Like just heal people on support, right? Like obviously it's oversimplification. Just shoot people on DPS. Obviously oversimplification, but tanking has no just do this. Like yeah, wrap it up. We're not getting. We're, no, we're, we're gonna You're start right. yapping. We're gonna start yapping. Uh, Brent's, Brent's player of the week. Should we just give it to Jake for taking on the six versus six people? <laughs> they give it to this. They give it give to, it to this, the, this guy. Um, give it to this guy. This, this video is hilarious. Wait, this is this is so high level. Like, why don't you just like wear a hat, bro? Like, <laughs> well, I feel like it's maybe not that high I feel level like because this is you're fake. very slow. This can't be real, right? Somebody made There's this no for a viral video. There's no way it's real. Like, surely not. There's no way. A, no, this somebody is real. genuinely thought this was like. I mean, I mean, somebody made this video as like a fake, right? No, like, no, it's just totally legit. There's this no is way this uh... is a real thief, bro. People just walk up in broad daylight, grab the package, and leave. Like, why are you doing this? They're like... so sly. Look at them. They're so sly. <laughs> they did this for a hundred bucks that it takes to send in a news story, bro. That's what they did. All right. I need, I need, I need the bronze for the week, guys. Do just give, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you, Jake. I'll give it to you, Jake. <laughs> bro, Jake just gets a free play. Brains play the week. This oh, means you, you everything want to me. Other, you this means role? everything. You want that role? <laughs> you can have, have that role. What did you do? Did you just cover all the Asian regions and North American EMEA at the what same time? What I actually time? did. What I actually did was took. Uh, what I actually did was took my first day off of streaming yesterday. No way. After, 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 it's so after dope. After pretty streaming. Deserved. After can streaming thirty-seven days in a row. You think so? Thirty-seven days in a row. That's crazy. That's fucked up. Yeah. It's not. That's you. You are. That's not. Yeah. All right, guys. Some people like to stream. I guess. That's Look at him up. go. That's, Look at those uh, hours watched. Good job, Apple. The stream is popping off, though. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. That's a lot of green numbers, bro. Huge. My, my ass when I don't have a job, I guess. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. He's so real for that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, God. Power Watch Simulator. Point it out. My <laughs> God. It's good. 262 Power hours. Good, though. God damn. I got yeah. into Horizon recently. It's been my current game. So, yeah. anyway, all right, I'm back. I'm back right. tonight. Wait, so, who's got the best for the week? Avril's day Avril. off. Avril Avril's day is. off. Good my job, Avril. Off. Avril for taking the day off. Yeah, that's, Avril that's for taking Avril. the day Avril off. Self care. Responsible king. Oh, I can't wait to go take a day off, guys. <laughs> that's gonna be great. Oh, all right, great. this is Ben. Thanks, guys. Plat chat, Overwatch, episode two twenty. Guys, we're so close to five years of this podcast. Can you guys Holy. believe it? Five years of this podcast. Holy. I mean, I know it's been a know, rotating cast and everything, but like we, I Have keeping you been this here podcast since the up beginning, for four, four. Are you the OG? I am the OG. Yeah, wow, it's look uh, at you. yeah, since twenty nineteen. I'm just a young, still going, chicken. still yeah. going. <laughs> I'm an old head over here. Can't believe it. All right, well, episode two twenty. We'll, uh, we'll 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 see you at uh, episode two sixty. I think that'll be five years. So Yippee. that'll be great. Right. There you go. Holy that shit! Wow. Chat episode one. Look at Matt. There it is. Look at Johnny. I'm man. just. Can I just say by the You're way? Intense, I think it's bro. I think You're it's, locked the fuck in. I I think it's actually like fucking hilarious that our episode one uh graphic is the same color palette as uncoachable but that's just oh me. it is yeah oh, <laughs> i just think that's an oh, insane sir, coincidence natural <laughs> evolution yeah. natural evolution it is just, just the overwatch play, color, color palette right they're, they're they're going the same arc they're going the same arc you know eventually we, we, flat chat will, yeah we'll, brandon we'll, couldn't we'll, make we'll it be by back way. to this color and they'll be josh the still had hair in that too look at that look at him go yeah um all right all right but there it goes uh i'm looking forward to your episode jake on uncoachable it's gonna be a fun watch so Looking forward to that. All, All right. right, take care, everybody. We'll uh, we'll see you next week when the Swiss stage is over, Yippee. and uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Bye bye. Bye bye.